Uh, let's see if I remember how to do this. Hello, everybody. Cool. Hey, we got a hype stream. We're doing stuff. Uh, welcome to Golden VCR. Hey everyone, jeez, I feel rough, but I'm back and I'm glad to be back, uh, and I'm happy to be <laughs> doing a Golden VCR stream, the f that's the first thing I do post sleep, uh, jet lagged after getting back from Japan, whoa, I'm so glad to be back in America, we have, um, off screen prior to the stream, received a thousand bits from Jacebook. Said, Welcome back, Alex. I think it would be a splendid idea to welcome you back to Eagle Land with Flight of the Urubu from Brazilian Coordination for Drum Set, the most American song. Thank you. We'll get right to that, Jacebook. Uh, Circle Now Square, three month resub. We're back. Excellent. Rebel Tech TV, four month resub. Can you believe it? It's been four months. Let's go. Welcome back. Brina BX, resubscribed. Four months. Welcome back. Thank you, Brina. And, uh,. Private Butter gifted a one month a, two, a one month sub to Seth Rebecca. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Get those fun points. Check those balances. Um, a a thousand bits from seemingly just welcome home, Alex. And so happy to see our little PCR fam gathering together again. Maybe some don't touch me to help celebrate as well. All right, all right. I'm so Japan was a really fun trip. I liked it a lot. It was it, Japan is a lovely country and a fun place to visit. I am happy to be back in my homeland with all its faults. I went to I got Taco Bell breakfast uh, because I woke up and figured there's no food in the house and I have to stream. And I went to the Taco Bell breakfast and the employee the employee was a that made the food and brought it out for me it was like hey you oh do you have a mobile pickup you're Alex I was like yeah and they they were a, a, a rather you know heavy set person uh, it uh, had like a buzz with long hair that was like done up in a bun and a hairnet um, and they had a, a big tattoo that said there was like a painted rainbow gradient that had big text that said love is love uh, and they were, they were making my food, and they brought it out to me. And they, they, they looked at the receipt, and were like, "Oh, shit, man! I'm sorry. I, I, I gotta tell you, I, I read the screen wrong, and your, um, your toasted breakfast burrito, the one that's like a dollar ninety nine. I actually made that a grande, which is like the five dollar one. Is that okay with you?" <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah." I'm sorry, I, you know, I'm just waking up, and I was like, I feel you. <laughs> um, but I looked at this person, and I had the, and, and I, you know, in the Taco Bell, and I thought, you are America, and you are beautiful. I love you. It's just so nice to be home. We have a lot of great things in America. We have a, a diverse range of people who are free to express themselves and don't have to follow, like, precise social rules that you as a visitor or on the outside of. Um, love it. Great to be back. Uh, let's see. We also had ba -ba -ba. Oh, a level 2 hype train, which does not have a specific Peter Gabriel upgrade yet. Um, but thank you for, for the resubs. Luna Gazer with a 4-month resub. Welcome back, Alex. Thank you, Luna. Haley92 cheered a thousand bits. <laughs> Y'all are making this easy on me. We're just gonna. It's just going to be a clip show of Golden VCR Classics to start us off while I eat Taco Bell. I feel like we need to stand back and enjoy the show with some Peter Gabriel Steen. Uh, I do not have the 1994 Grammy performance ready to go available. It, and it, I didn't get it off of a VHS tape. But if someone sends me a VHS tape of the 1994 Grammys, then we'll, we'll see what we can do with that. Great. Oh, and thank you for the sunroom ghost. I like that, too. Alright, let me cue that up and eat Taco Bell in front of you.
we had what? What did we have? We had Urubu. Oh yeah, I will be going to the um, P.O. Box shortly, just in case anything got sent in while I was on vacation. The postal employees were very mad at me last time because I, like, the big Bella Bunny box almost got sent back to Canada. It was in like the send back to Canada pile when I came to pick it up, and they were. Usually, I get the nice clerk, but I got the old lady who's just like, "Yeah, you need to come here earlier." And I was like, "Oh yes, I'm sorry." She's like, "Really? We don't have a lot of room here." You need to be here. We technically will send it back within 10 days. And I was like, uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Um, anyway, if there's, I, I know there were a couple of um, a couple of eyewitness tapes that were that were still pending, but those are small enough to just fit in my PO box. They're not going to get sent back. Um, if anything else was sent in, I'll, I'll be able to grab it. To, well, not today, but and not Monday probably, but Tuesday. Um, and um, but anyway, my point is I'm going to the I'm going to the PO box uh, soon. But also don't continue to not send tapes. <laughs> we have too many tapes. Uh, okay, let's do this. Yeah, we have a lot of eyewitness. I want to watch some eyewitness. Be my guest. I, I picked one before we left. Hey, Sapphire Becca. Hey, Becca. Can you give some? Thank you. Paying it forward, I see. Taco Bell employee was also like, cool, great, have a good one, happy Easter. And I was like, oh yeah, we're in the, we're in the, we're in the, for, if you're a, whatchamacallit, Christian, sorry, if you're a celebrated Christian, we're in like the Paschal Triduum, right? Or no, we're past the Paschal Triduum. I forget what the Pascal Triduum is. It's, or is it Trivium? No, Triduum. We're in the time of, like, the, the sacred time between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, so... I, they, that's not really a big deal culturally in Japan, so I did not... God's property from Zelda Master. Thank you. Thank you. It's very sweet of you guys to, to welcome, me, welcome me back. But I assume that means the bottom Hello, part is going to be. My name is Maria Martinez, and I would like to welcome you to the Brazilian egg. coordination for drum set. Oh, I've missed. Don't touch me. That's a lie. I have it. <laughs> it's going to get stuck in my head now. Dozo. Dozo is a word I've, I've heard a million times. 
million times. Because it's what the staff says to you when they're ready to talk to you. This is Don't Touch Me. Drives me insane, collapsing in exquisite pain. The vibrant dreams of nature's way lie smoldering in ashen gray. Don't touch me with your love, don't touch me with your. As a reminder, we have friends. I keep forgetting that I developed that entire feature. Hey, bells and whistles from the Bella Bunny. A thousand, a thousand pride bits. Thank you, Bella. If her name is Sunny. Nina Long Neck. I love the unexpected environmental message in this song. Just basically like, I don't know, you shouldn't be trying to be in love with me because the planet's dying. It's kind of like, if you want to be my lover, you got to solve climate change. If you want to be my lover, you got to solve climate change. Sunny smiles, a sunny. Thank you, Chase Cook. Thank you for the 50 bits, Zelda Master. And enjoy your 50 gold piece here on points. It's a quarter of a ghost, or a sixth of a friend. No way, friends are too empty. The message of this song is that Peter Gabriel <laughs> had a lot of money. He's the performer. Inexplicably has a V for Vendetta mask for a face. I have I don't think so. I haven't I haven't caught up on games. But I will I will check up check up this bird later. You know you cut your from your trash. I should really add a Discord channel that's just called, like, The Bridge. So that when people make memes and stuff that they want to share, they can just post it on The Fridge. I don't think anyone wants to see the IRL Peter Gabriel crotch. The phrase, like adding IRL to the phrase Peter Gabriel crotch makes it so much worse. Oh my god. Perfect timing, Jason. Perfect timing. That's okay. Let's see. It's 
the train. I have granted Jayswick 500 additional gold PCR fund points for nailing the perfect timing of stand back. You know you're green from the red. You know the queen from the dead. So much better than the rest. You think you do bless. But I know you. You know you let a funny snake. You know the trouble from the break. You know you steamy. A steam. The middle of my burrito, by the way, was all sausage, and now the bottom is all egg. It is interesting how in 1993, pre-rendered Peter Gabriel technology is exactly on par with where real-time graphics Gmod Peter Gabriel would be in 2008. Sunny, a sun, by American standards, standard gauge, and the, I did not know that the, like, the subway trains and everything, the transit system is narrow gauge. It's not like it's going uphill very steeply or anything. Trinity, a friend, a Jesus who's by your side three times, that makes total sense. Just adjust the chat prompt to be like, give me a name, but please don't use the name Sonny. A uh, not Sonny, Lenny. Love Lenny. Sonny, a feel. Why? Why is it Sonny? Being narrow gauge is also cost effective. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I mean, I, I, there, there's, it's limited space. So, like, you can fit two tracks side by side. And it's for, like, you know. I don't know, like, is, is the. Are the, like, New York and Boston and DC, like, American? Subway systems. Narrow gauge as well. The cars feel about the same. But I suppose the undercarriage can be different size. More bells and whistles is great. Absolutely great. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for the warm welcome back. Let's um, figure out some tapes.
We do have the other computer animation tape. The sun is a deadly laser. Laser Lyric, a musical laser. Um, we have the other computer animation tape, but uh, that is that is one of the like likely Hall of Fame tapes um, that I want to be sure the, the contributor, in this case Brad, is here for. Um, so what else we got? We got a lot of eyewitness. We got a lot of things in boxes that um, have not been added yet. We got, um, I believe it was Green Day, sent in a couple of uh, Smoky Mountain Hymns uh, music tapes, which would be excellent, but I haven't had them, added them yet. So tell you what, let's do one entirely at random, uh, but no fitness. I'm too tired for that. Uh, oh yeah, I also got a couple of tapes in Japan. Just a couple. It was really limited on space there. And also didn't find any more than a few opportunities to buy them. We went to a lot of book-off stores, but book-off does not stock dead media. <laughs> no VCDs, no cassette tapes, no floppy disks. No VHS. Um, okay, let's do... Band Saws of a Straight Story by Laguna Tools. That's what the random drew. That I think is going to be great. Let's learn the straight story of Band Saws. Bandsaw's The Straight Story is unkind. Um, it is a suspiciously long tape by Laguna Tools in Irvine, California. Bandsaw's The Straight Story, TS slash TSS. Um, it has that much tape on the reel. So it's like at least two hours, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps more about bandsaws, so I don't know how much of it we will end up seeing, but uh, it, <laughs> if we watch it just a little bit, then it goes away. It leaves the shelf, which is what we need. Slinky, a suspiciously long. Sorry, my uh, the parsing of the friend commands is not like totally perfect. You can do friend thing. You can do friend of thing. You can do friend who is thing. And then you can do like a or an or the like an article and it'll parse that out. But then um, if you don't have an article, it'll put one in there. Also, you can specify, I don't know if I've mentioned this, you can specify a color, but it's only a specific list of colors. So you can do like a green bear or a yellow orange yellow dash orange bear um, but you can't do like a turquoise bear because turquoise is not uh, uh, uh. so like the friend who is the longest straightest yellowest of all time that'll get parsed as the, the subject of the prompt will be the longest straightest yellowest of all time but then it'll also put in in this case, red. It'll like generate a random color and be like a red longest, straightest, yellowest of all time. It's a little wonky. A bandsaw, Benny Blades, a blue bandsaw. There you go. It's kind of a guessing game, but let me let me find the place where it is in the code. Um, Generation? No. No, it's in this other Stand by. Ah, because because microservices. Um, let's see, where is it? Generation. 
Yeah. Yeah, so this is... You can read the source code. It's really not that hard. Don't worry if you're not a code boy. Um, to get the list of colors. <laughs> It's very, I don't know, this is, this, is, <laughs> this is some very special casey weird code for parsing the, the friend prompts. Oh, we're getting so close on this tape. We are, Jesus Lord, Vinny of EHS tape. We are getting there, getting so close. I could go back and get another tape, but I'm really hyped for bandsaws. Genevieve, a repo the Jeanette. Friend re... Oh. <laughs> yeah. See? Parsing is a little weird. Hey, 90 bits from Haley92 to get to an even number of fun points. Thank you for the 90 bits. Uh, Haley, you, t you, like I, have infinite fun points, basically. That is Haley, my wife. Sorry, Haley92, I don't mean you. <laughs> That is, that, is, no, that is not the contract that we have established. I'm sorry. Um, okay. We are rewound. Bandsaws. Let's see what happens. What the hell is in this VCR? It's in our prenup. Infinite fun points. Oh, yeah. Eyewitness Volcano. In two weeks. Uh, Bandsaws, The Straight Story by Laguna Tools. Here we go. Zelda Master 702. Luna. Uh, my wife. Oh, and I tell you what, I'm going to need to do the thing I always forget to do where I go to this directory and I run this script to open up this thing. Got it. My wife. Laguna Tools shall not be held responsible for any injuries sustained while operating the following machinery. It is the responsibility of the customer to ensure that anyone operating the machinery demonstrated in this video has reviewed and understood all safety and operational instructions provided prior to operation. This video is intended to accompany the written instructions provided with your machine. It shall remain the ultimate responsibility of the customer to determine if the machine is operating safely and properly as intended. This video may contain certain scenes in which safety equipment has been removed for illustration purposes. It shall not be implied that this is proper and safe operation of the machine and or proper and safe woodworking practice. Okay, consult your woodworking CPA before doing any bandsaw tasks. Hello, my name is Brad Tucker, and welcome to our presentation on the Laguna TS and TSS table saw. It's Brad. In front of me, it's I Brad have a typical Tucker. American designed cabinet saw. This is a very old design, and there are many manufacturers that have a machine with this same design. This just looks like a wood shop. The good uh, ones have a very wood long shop. tradition, and they are the backbone of most like woodworking shops in, rural in North Minnesota. America. Now, let me show you what made this design so popular. One, it's really a very simple, sturdy design. There's a good rip fence Alfie, that stays in. parallel to the blade. There are two grooves in the tabletop. We call these miter slots. And together with the miter gauge, you can make all your angle and miter cuts. You can also make 90 degree square cuts on relatively small material. Another nice feature Nad. of this table saw is that it will accept a dado blade. There are many table saws that will not accept yeah, they a dado show up blade. In the order in which and this they has were become generated. such a common woodworking practice the, that it's really a must have for any table saw today if you're lucky, looking for lucky. one. This saw could, oh, he looks however, like a stand to Mr. get some improvements. Mr. Grumpy Boy One is this whatever. blade guard and splitter. It's fixed in position. Thank you to see It the doesn't raise or lower with Moose. the blade like on the European saws. What this means is that there are many cuts that it's in the way and it must be removed. Most woodworkers remove it, don't ever put it back on, which makes this actually a very dangerous design. The miter gauge. 
While it's fine for smaller uh, miter cuts like picture frames and moldings, it's not, an, it doesn't have enough capacity for commonly used materials like 1 by 12 or plywood. It would be nice if this had some more capacity. The throat plate. This is light and aluminum. It's really not up to par with the rest of the machine. These are often not very flat, and a lot of woodworkers replace these or make their own. Also, since the opening is very yeah, small, we are left channel someone like now. myself with large hands, this is very difficult to get in here to work on the machine and change blades. And if you're talking about a data blade, it's even tougher. So, so we're learning about we come up with. <clears throat> the flaw, the common flaws of other band saws. And now we're going to learn about the band the saw Laguna she told you not to worry about. TS table saw. Later in the tape, I'll show you the TSS, which is the same machine. Just the right here on this side, we have a nice sliding table for larger cross-cut capacity. As you can see, we stuck to the tried and true American design. We've also added the best European features. And since many of us here at Laguna are woodworkers, we've also thrown in some of our own inventions. Now first, take a look at the base. As you can see, we've made it much wider. We've also made it deeper. According to my VCR, this is, this is recorded in SP stability. mode, but the quality We've is also ass. We've used heavier gauge steel, again to increase stability and add strength. I guess strength. it's just the camera they used. Now let and me show you up close like not the cast iron and vibrating top. up and down. This is where we used a lot of the standard American features Tabby, an American that we like table. so much. Tabby. We've just made everything heavier. As you can see, there are two miter slots on either side of the blade. We've used a standard dimension, 3 eighths deep by 3 quarter wide. This is so you can use all your standard miter gauges and aftermarket accessories. And we've carried the heavy construction right through to the steel outfeed table. Heavy gauge steel that's reinforced with box beams approximately 6 Evans, inches on center. People. The legs are steel with standard leveling screws. Now look at this throat plate. All cast iron, not aluminum. It's twice the size of the old saws. The opening is large. There's plenty of room for my hand. There are six leveling screws to keep this perfectly level with the main table. The actual insert is dovetailed into place so that making your own dado throat plate or zero clean clearance inserts is really easy. You can easily make one for every one of your blades. And while I have this open, I oh, want to talk to you about to the private butter. blade arbor. We've chosen to use a standard 5 8 arbor because we know most people like to use 10-inch blades. But this saw will also accept a 12-inch blade. The splitter or riving knife. We've oh, used wait, we used a have standard a... European design, which means it goes up and down with um, the blade. How much so band saw <laughs> do you feel like watching? very safe. Now let me show you a few cuts that can only be made safely with this design. Okay, we're going to get some cuts. We're going to get some band sawing in, at least. Six minutes of band saws. And we're left here. The European style riving knife can be set very close to the blade. You can also see how it follows the We've got cake of the blade. From Jaspook. And since it raises and lowers in unison, this means that this close you, tolerance Jaspook, thank you can for, be maintained thank you no matter where you set the height. So we can celebrate private Now there style. are many pieces of wood that have a natural tension just waiting to come out. What this means is yeah, my grandpa that had a stump. Sometimes like his, you'll be one ripping of a piece of lumber like cut and off to here, and instead of a fingernail, it had a like little triangular down chunk of on bone the blade. Poking this out is of what it. causes dangerous kickback. What a proper riving knife will do his thumb off on is a it will keep that kerf open. In like the 60s. It makes it much safer to cut pieces of wood with this tension. Another nice feature is that it doesn't have to be removed when you are cutting through a piece of wood, but not all the way through the material. 
Let me show you what I mean. I feel like, yeah, I have been a little quiet. I guess I can crank my input gain up a bit, in addition to speaking slightly louder. I've been eating burritos, so I've had the mic uh, out of the way. And also, I haven't shaved in two weeks, because I didn't want to bring a beard trimmer to the other side of the world with me. So it's all in the way. Hey, Floor Fauna! Three month resub. Yay! Stream with my ceramics. You can do anything with your ceramics. They were getting uh, getting a little mortise and tenon action here. It's been a really long time, but I many. Well, several years ago, I fell down, like, I watched, I used to watch a lot of woodworking YouTube. Now I want to show you the rip fence. Which, at least back then, was a great American corner of YouTube. square design. Just like a bunch of dads. There's a hairline readout for accurate measurements. Making woodworking projects, talking about their shops. rip capacity. Rather than using plywood sides like the original, we use a smooth, phenolic surface. Now let me show you underneath how we use T-slots to bolt these on. This makes it very easy to work on or replace in the future if you ever need to. Now I want to show you a feature normally only found on larger professional... Oh, Paul models. Sellers. Let me tell you what, Paul Sellers, he's from Liverpool. He's a, a British woodworker. He's basically, he's the Bob Ross of woodworking. Like old school hand tool um, kind of stuff. He doesn't use any power tools. Paul Sellers is the man. Now before coming to Laguna, I had a woodworking business in Carmel, California. A typical project that we would have worked on required extremely high quality woodworking, expensive materials, and perfect cuts. We had special blades to cut veneered plywoods. We had another set of special blades that we used to cut materials like laminates and melamine. A big problem that we had was that these special blades didn't cut perfectly for very long at all. We had to be very careful. We were constantly watching for the first signs of tear out. And then we would change the blades. If we weren't careful, we would go through a lot of expensive material and waste a lot of time and money only to realize that the cuts we were making were not acceptable. Now this is a piece of cherry veneer plywood. I have started a poll to see if we want this to keep doing this. Hey, a thousand bits from Zelda Master. Didn't we get songs podcast. from that PBS show with like every notable I voice actor in existence? Ah, the book of Using the big go the book of Play one of those. If not, we can do time. the organ treads song. This I guess. is not a nice cut. Um, I could not give this to one of my customers. Oh, the other thread song. I, I see what you mean, Zelda Master. Thank you. Um, y y y mm. So we did get a bunch of songs the from the Book of Virtues, but it's uh, copyright strike hell. Like it, saws. it had to get and cut out of the VOD because anything from the Book of Virtues is automatically this one, banned in all still territories. Make perfect cuts. Um, Scoring. Now, I don't want to be so too I think, on the good old American design, but if I would have I think we'll watch the for all song. those years, it would have saved me a lot of headache. But thank you for that. Thank time you. And money. We're getting like the so, full, let me show the you full rotation. The only things left and how it works. that have not been requested to stream are the Royal Terrell Museum songs and um, more Brazilian drums, I think. Scoring is actually a separate blade the rope tates in the opposite direction as the main blade. We're getting into some like it its cool bandsaw internals now. And separate switch. But also, this is going to be several hours of bandsaw. A pair of blades with shims. 
That's right. I do have eyewitness song. It does get the VOD banned in Russia, to adjust the which is fine. We'd probably have zero Russian viewers. Just barely um, wider than the main blade. The scoring blade it makes me slightly nervous because what if right. YouTube like shadow bands it or something? But alignment mm, to the main it's blade. fine. This isn't. Then this the isn't line. about like. So that it just achieving widespread international success with Gold Vizier. By a sixteenth of an inch or so. So we can probably have Hence that the name scoring. Too. I was hoping there would be like what this a version of the theme on a different tape. Is it and it was just a fluke that the one from Desert got flagged, but the one from Volcano got flagged too. Path. And the main blade never actually makes contact with the bottom. Um, of let me do This is why it makes perfect cuts. A few things here before we get rid of Brad, the bandsaw man. Just cue a few things up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make another cut using the same blade that's been on for quite a while. Oh, hell. All right. But I'm not going to um, turn on the scoring. Okay, let's be done with Brad. Thank you, Brad, for your bandsaw message. We love you. Uh, right. Threads. Right. Well, well why didn't you say so? Soon. They've got cake! I forgot that I didn't do this one right now. Happy birthday to Private Butter. This one is kind of catchy, you know? Grab your dancing shoesies. Do the elephant wax shoesies. This band's so hot, I'm soaking. Oh, hey, uh, thanks for letting us have my party here. Oh, you're welcome, old chap. It turned into quite a party after all. That cake was absolutely inspiring. I uh, don't suppose I could get the recipe for my wife. Quite right. Well, all my Stand back. You could help us find our way back home. I could give it to you then. What a smashing idea! Are you ready to go then, chips? I'm ready. Me too. All set. Wait, where's Patches? I'm right here. I figured we should wrap up my present before we go. If one of these pachyderms got a whiff of this sneasel bush, we'd have spent the rest of my birthday on the moon. <laughs> I really wish they had cut the song off earlier, <laughs> but all that dialogue is kind of jammed in there. All righty then. <clears throat> Pack it up. Okay, thank you to Zelda Pack Master. It. Stack it up. There's a Unstack it. There's a, a consolation it prize Unclog from the Book of Virtues after this. Hog it up. Unhog it. Jam it up. Unjam it. Cram it up. Unclog we could do eyewitness after up. this. Somebody come on and Sounds tell good. me over here. You choose your eyewitness. We can. You can nominate eyewitnesses and we'll do a poll. Take a look at them.
the show was obviously about Jesus and the Christian message made accessible to children. I mean, how could you not tell that? This is great. Thank you very much. Man, am I glad that's done. In the rain season. And happy birthday to Private Butter. As people get older, they tend to become more concerned about safety. This has certainly been true with me. And since I have already had my 72nd birthday, I am far more concerned about safety than most people. All right, happy birthday. We did it. So, it can now be time for one of these eyewitness tapes. Dogfish, sight cat, elephant, arctic, seashore shark, amphibian, weather, bird, human machine, or dinosaur. I do have a dog underneath my desk that I have missed very much. Mm. Okay, we can do either. Let's do a poll. I'll make a poll. Eyewitness. Dog. Cat. Uh, yeah. One minute pull. Dog or cat? Happy birthday, Swift. Belatedly. Kid songs, circus, or what I want to be. Non, non biggles kid songs. Okay. We will keep those in mind, too. Oh, cat is in the lead. If you don't pick dog, Leka won't get her breakfast. Leka. If you want to see Leka participate in the eyewitness, now's your chance to vote for dog. Otherwise, it's looking like by one vote, it's cat. All right. Poor dog. Poor Leka. Leka, are you hungry? She is. Uh, okay. Well, I'll go get. Um, I'll go get the eyewitness cat tape. Narrated by Martin Sheen. 's must be like the original eyewitness series <clears throat> if it's from 94 I think these go through like from like 94 to 97 um, this is eyewitness cat based on the revolutionary book series with 21 million copies sold eyewitness video is the ultimate guide to natural history journey into a three-dimensional virtual museum where live action photography creates the sensation of being inside the picture. State-of-the-art special effects and stunning graphics bring the natural world to life. Follow the fascinating and ancient journey of these mysterious and adored animals from the African savanna to the modern home. Investigating evolution, anatomy, habitat, behavior, and more eyewitness cat lets you discover the secret lives of the cat family. 
and it has listed what I assume is the original run of first series eyewitness tapes. Some of which we've seen, many of which we have. And this one is fully rewound. Let's do it. So, farewell to Bandsaw Brad. <laughs> if you'll just kindly exit our VCR, Bandsaw Brad. Sorry. Bad, bandsaw Brad. Uh, and we can pop in. Eyewitness Cat. The VCR says it's 9.06 p.m., which is about... about what time it is in Japan. <laughs> Eyewitness Cat. It's about what time my body feels like it is. And here we go, eyewitness cat. Four-month resub from Green Day. We are back. Welcome home, Alex. Thank you. I feel very welcomed back. Ooh, that is a, a nice funk-shaded car. They ain't, they ain't got no clear coat shaders. Eyewitness cat. The cat. Stealthy, solitary, secretive, and intelligent, said to possess nine lives. Is that oboe eyewitness theme in the background? Unexpected. Jazz oboe eyewitness theme? Oh, this was the first one produced or released. Okay. Hey, thank you for the 500 bits, Bella Bunny. In the words of a poet, cats, no less liquid than their shadows, offer no angles to wind. They slip, diminished, neat, through loopholes less than themselves. Certainly no matter where a cat falls, it always lands on its feet. Perhaps cats do have nine lives. Prowling on big and little cat's feet, they spread throughout the world. There are over 35 species of wild cats, over 300 breeds of domestic cats. Graceful and evocative, cats have long toyed with the human imagination, leaving their mark in myth and legend. But big or small, wild or domestic, they're all the same under the skin. Evolution has fine-tuned every cat, from tabby to tiger, towards one purpose, the hunt. A killing Droplet. machine with super senses, so the cute. tiger's ears can detect sounds at very high frequencies, allowing it to pinpoint unsuspecting prey. <laughs> its large baby. eyes and acute vision enable it to judge distance instantly and perfectly to zero in on its target. According to Indian mythology, Shiva punished man's growing fearlessness by creating the tiger. In reality, tigers rarely attack people, even though their nightly hunts covering over 12 miles can bring them close to human settlements. That cat's in, that cat's in Chicago. He's going to join the street gang. the back of many gang. cities lies the undercover world of feral cats, cats that once lived under human control but have returned to their wild ways. Oh, the concrete jungle please. has become home to hunter and hunted alike, and the result is always the same. Wild cats live on meat alone and are considered the most highly specialized of flesh eaters. 
From tooth to tail, cats are walking weapons. And they can afford to be finicky eaters, picking and choosing what and when to eat. Oh, I missed that. Thank you to Green Day for gifting us up to the such quickly. perfect killing machines, it's no wonder they inspire fear. The cat's arsenal includes padded feet with sharp claws, a muscular build, camouflaged fur, powerful jaws, a highly evolved brain, and a sensitive nose. Its special skills are patience, silence, and speed. A cat's whiskers are as wide as its body, allowing it to navigate narrow spaces and gauge its position while stalking prey. Like fingerprints, the pattern of these sensitive feelers gives each animal a unique imprint. Cats are the oblivion stealth archers of the animal kingdom. Poised to deliver a very different impression, dagger-like canine teeth jut from a jaw powerful enough to snap a bone in a single bite. Forward-facing eyes and excellent vision enable cats to see six times better than humans, even in the dark. Large, movable ears hear so acutely that a bat fluttering its wing sounds like a drum roll. They can detect the exact location of their prey. Okay, then. Yeah. And when a cat plays with its prey, one wonders if it really hunts to live or lives to hunt. Although the approach to the prey may vary, every cat knows exactly where and when to spring and precisely when the kill But do cats possible. have fear? We've learned that polar Whoever bears wrote, absolutely do not. The cat loves fish but dares not wet her paws. Never saw a cat go fishing. Whatever the prey, whatever the cat, patience, cunning, and stealth are key. Missing, no, is that a detail that watches. they just made up to retcon the fact that Khajiit are just normal looking humans in Elder Scrolls 1 Arena? And, and in Daggerfall? And springs its ambush. They all happen to be born <laughs> at the same time of year. The first cats began to evolve 500 million years ago, long before humans walked the I earth. I guess they did, they did have tails in Daggerfall. A weasel-like creature called Miasis is considered to be the first cat and the ancestor of all living carnivores. Then Miasis evolved into Denictus with its long fang-like teeth, sharp as ice picks. Then came the most ferocious cat of all, Smilodon a saber-toothed tiger whose fangs were more than eight inches long and curved like unsheathed daggers from its jaw. An old Jewish belief holds that while God created lions, he did not create house cats. The first male and female cats were snorted forth from the nostrils of the lion on board Noah's Ark. But how did cats from the wild become tamed and give rise to over 300 domestic varieties? It all began nearly 5,000 years ago in ancient Egypt, where the Sphinx, with the body of a lion and the head of a king, pays tribute to the vigilant role cats played in Egyptian history. Rats and mice were Hold up! <laughs> My creature is growing! ...spreading disease and eating the people's precious grain. Hold up! but the pests met their match in some feral cats called reed cats who feasted on the vermin. The rodents sought refuge, but the line was drawn in the sand and the game of cat and mouse has raged ever since. Stand to this day in modern Egypt, it's considered good luck to own a cat. The Egyptians have expressed their gratitude to the cat in many ways. They worshiped Bastet, 
the cat goddess as the symbol of compassion and happiness. Even the sun god Ra sometimes took the shape of a cat. When a royal or sacred cat died, it was mummified, and the owners shaved off their eyebrows in mourning. In fact, the cat became so sacred that anyone who killed one was punished by death. The Egyptians' reverence for cats became so renowned that when the Persian army attacked Egypt, they placed cats on their shields, believing the Egyptians would never raise their swords to such sacred images. The Persians may have been right. They won the battle. Yeah, I don't know how like it would do on a ship with like the ocean and everything. Like any humans she, with she desirable skills, cats were soon invited to new territories. Their reputation for exterminating rats and mice quickly earned them a place on board ships where they were treated as essential crew members. They soon became as revered at sea as they were on land. Sailors believed cats brought good luck to their ships. A cat's cattle walling or placing one under a pot could raise winds. Japanese fishermen believed the cat would protect the crew from ghosts. The ship's cat had magical powers, even the ability to forecast storms. So cats traveled from port to port, conquering all kinds of climates, from the freezing temperatures in Antarctica to the tropical climate of the equator. <laughs> They've managed to make themselves at home in what all about kinds these of these eyewitness places. musical cues. Do, 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 do. Whisper, a cat who eats ghosts. Perhaps their cleverest leap was into the homes of people all over is the world. Is there a is there an eyewitness soundtrack CD somewhere that can be purchased? Cats use their charms to beguile humans to get just what they want: warmth, food, affection. Yet they remain aloof and independent. Even the smallest cats harbor the pride of a lion and while appearing to show affection, do exactly as they please. Cats are benevolent monarchs and express their pleasure by purring, actually the vibration of bones at the base of the tongue. But they've given something up in joining the human pride. Small cats can't roar and big cats can't purr. The lion doesn't need to purr to get its way, for its roar is one of the most frightening of animal sounds. Well, it's is, actually vibrating a, cartilage in the lion's throat. Mouth the impression of power into. and size is furthered by the mane, which has often been associated with the radiating rays of the sun. The male's role is to defend his pride and territory. His mighty roar is more likely his way of communicating to pride members than a means of striking terror. Throughout history, the links between lions and humans have been many and varied. Daniel gained fame when he was cast into a lion's den and survived. Killing a lion made Tarzan the king of his jungle. Although Tarzan was no Hercules, whose first labor was to kill a lion without piercing its skin with a weapon. All over the world, the lion remains a symbol of dominance. People born under the sign of Leo are said to be proud, brave, and strong. Zippy, just a like Tarzan. the king of beasts himself. The lion is the only cat to share its territory with other members of its family. But despite his ferocious image, the male is lazy. It's the lionesses that do the work. I haven't actually tested. There um, can be more than twenty in a pride. They hunt by working together as a team, you can give attacking from different directions in order to outflank and ambush their prey. Generator. 
the, to the to the inner generation or the, the ghosts, the friends. <laughs> I don't know how it will handle that. Oh, no, it understands. That's a watermelon. In the wild, the responsibilities of motherhood are often That's shared. A purple watermelon. Milk Melanie. is provided even for cubs which are not their own. Lion cubs are born with spotted markings which fade as they grow older. Okay, yeah. Manny the manicure mascot. While the domestic kitten may grow uh, up without contact with the wild, it still carries the instincts of a wild cat. Child care and child carrying go hand in hand when mothers must move their young from place to place at the first hint of danger. Oh, that's very cute. A little wiggle sack kitten. And although these cats seem to be playing without a care, play is actually training for survival. Don't do eggplant castle. These lynx are learning how to catch prey. It's a secret Their recipe mother to get banned. at an early age how to kill quickly and efficiently. Oh, an God. essential lesson in survival. Pete. When they get older, eggplant. failure can mean starvation. It takes three years for a tiger cub to grow to its full size. Hey, three month resub from Boop Snoot. Pounds and much. measuring over nine feet in length. Just like a house cat. If a tiger were to fall from a height, it would land on its feet. Stella. But the tiger is Wife no of house cat. In some Asian cultures, it is revered as a god. And there are many legends of weird tigers, people who turn into tigers at will. Although the tiger is the biggest and most powerful cat, it's certainly not Eggplant the fastest. Castles. The cheetah know. is. The cheetah is a sprinter. It can change directions without breaking its stride. Its spine works like a rubber band, elastic enough to form a perfect U. Big or small, all cats' skeletons are very similar. Their unique framework allows for great agility during the chase. Escape I love how, mean, matter of fact, the, the simply keeps top its eye like, on Google the selected answer is. Forward. The when you Google eggplant emoji, the first thing it uh, tells you is, what does eggplant emoji mean? Eggplant emoji means penis. It trips up the prey, okay. and then delivers the fatal bite. The bones of cat's feet have evolved, so they always walk and run on their toes. A cheetah's claws can't retract like other cats, but are always out, like the spikes on a track shoe, gripping the ground for maximum speed. Its legs are the longest in relation to its body of any cat, making it the fastest land mammal in the world. It's kind of fun that you can just use emoji interchangeably. Like it, it understands. It can them. accelerate from zero to over 70 vents. miles per hour in A three seconds. Castle. I like how they've composited the cheetah onto the mirror and then also both reflections of the mirror that appear in the car. The cheetah can leave a sports car in the dust, but it only has the stamina to maintain that speed for 220 yards. Oh yes, aubergine if you, if you prefer. Cat's eyes have a special mirror-like surface inside the eyeball that traps the light and bounces it back and forth. This is why a cat's eyes appear to shine at night and why it? they have such good night vision, even in starlight. Poopster. Most cats are nocturnal hunters, and the majority of them hunt on their own. 
They're able to detect the slightest movement in the dark. Is that a caracal? But contrary with the to popular belief, the cat ears. can't see in total darkness. I forget. Oh God. Uh, that may be too long, Trill. I don't know if it. I think it truncates. I'm not sure. Its pupils react we'll quickly see. to changes Goldie. in light levels from luminous tape. globes at night to narrow slits during the day. Yeah, if you use Twitch emotes, it will interpret whatever the text name of that emote capable is. Capable of communicating with the dead, but most cats prefer the living. Ocean man, take me by the hand. Me a cat's the tail is a good mood understand. indicator. A twitching tail means the cat is aggravated That's or great. tense. That's great. That worked. Stronger wagging means anger, while the mood of a Manx remains a mystery. It has no tail at all. But then a cat's intentions aren't always obvious. When it appears to be playing, it's more likely trying to take possession of something. Or sharpening its claws or cleaning them. Exercising its limbs or stretching its muscles. Or exercising its right to a little sibling rivalry. And when it comes to cleanliness, the cat is immaculate. It spends much of the day trying to keep its coat sleek and in top condition. But looks can be deceiving. While all this licking and combing does clean and relax a cat, it's also part of a complex communication system whereby it spreads its scent all over its body. Mutual grooming is more of a friendly act, Penguin sunglasses, the social bond between the animals. I, I'm really excited to see what that one turns into. The highly specialized tongue is rough and hey. can be curved into a scoop to lap up water or aid in totally did it from the bone. Huh. This is actually interesting. So Whatever if you wanted to do shape, cats behave in similar if ways. If you wanted to do a feature like this, but you didn't trust your community the way that I trust mine, and you wanted to like restrict many it. Different personalities. Um, cats everywhere are a puzzle. You could you could make it all, like a, an emoji only thing. Certainly legend. It has been surpassed by cat breeders and the fickleness of feline fashion. The Persian, oh, one these, of the first yes. long-haired breeds, won the very first cat show in 1871. The Siamese, lanky, loud, and intelligent, arrived in Europe from Siam in 1880 and was an immediate sensation. A Siamese was crossed with a Persian, producing a Burman. It has a longer body than a typical I love the crowd shot it always of has just white individual feet shots of cats. To legend, Composited together the because you can't possibly get blue a room full of cats to stand of fur, still. And was Tsar Nicholas's favorite cat. Next up is a little number <laughs> known as the Orange Self, now redesigned by breeders oh. as the Red Self, a victim of fashion with a nose that is now so flat it can hardly breathe. Is that just? That looks a lot Most like. Most cats uh, had short hair up until about a hundred years ago. With the growing Simu trend in designer Sorry. cats, fashion called for more long hairs. Then curly hairs became the rage in England. Even no hairs had a brief reign. We're doing the Mario 3 matching In zoos game. and circuses, Cats. lions sometimes mate with tigers, creating ligers, or tigons. A tiger's stripes help to break up its outline. But whether the coat is camouflaged with stripes, rosettes, or spots, it has evolved to conceal the Lenny. animal from its intended prey. It's not sunny. The jaguar's dappled coat blends in with the dappled light of the South American rainforests. Aztec warriors call themselves the jaguar knights. The word jaguara means he who strikes down his prey in a single bound. It's the only cat that doesn't go for the throat, but bites down through the skull to kill its prey. Tigo. The snow leopard's coat is much lighter. This beautiful rare animal comes from the high mountains of East Asia, where the climate is tough and food is scarce. Only the hardiest can eke out an existence. It has a thick inner coat for warmth, while the outer coat carries the pattern. <laughs> That's a pretty good little Napoleon dynamite. 
The clouded leopard from Southeast Asia is a twilight hunter, moving superbly among trees, hunting monkeys, squirrels, and birds. This has a pretty different vibe from the hunting uh, ability of the cat in the east. Other is so eyewitness tapes that we've watched. Buddhists believe it was the only animal not present at the death of the great. Buddha like usually, it goes into different like kind of subject areas and would be telling us more about like you know cat time, biology, bird. how their organs work or whatever. But this is just Martin Sheen talking about different kinds of cats for 35 minutes, and I'm here for that. The sleek black panther is actually a leopard with hidden spots. I guess we got a little of Almost like, half of the these forest dwellers may be black, the making Persians them harder to them see in the dim light of the rainforest. There are also black servals, jaguars, and bobcats. Sitting motionless in the grass, the leopard is well camouflaged as it waits for the perfect moment to spring a trap. I feel like every high school I drive, I like see or drive by, they're, they're, it's always like the panthers or the cougars or the tigers or some sort of large cat. My high school mascot was a, a cavalier. We, we were the, ca so, the calves. Only one out of ten attempts is successful. Despite the difference in patterns of their fur, every cat has one marking in common a tear stripe at the corner of each eye. And many cats have white spots behind their ears. Chester. These are used for communication and are flashed as a signal of aggression. Ah uh, yes, a sprite from a Commodore 64 war strategy game. They also resemble eyes that discourage a potential enemy creeping up from behind. In India, oh, yeah, you're, humans borrow the trick for their own defense. Yourself. Forest workers found did you that you face your, mask worn on the back of the head often deterred tigers name from attacking them. Is the in the winter of the northern forest, the lynx, the, the mascot of your high school, plus the has changed into its winter coat. Current your current address it has one plus your mother's maiden summer, name and plus a your warmer, paler one number. for winter. And like the snow leopard, it has fur on the pads of its feet that for warmth you your, your and for distributing name. its weight over the soft snow. While cats have held fast to their independence, they're not above letting humans help them. It was a gentleman farmer with great affection for his cats who invented the cat flap. This was Isaac Newton, whose encounter with a falling apple led to the theory of gravity. Throughout history, cats have represented different things to different people. In the Middle Ages in Europe, Hunter they were out. cruelly persecuted, okay, sometimes three. burned as accomplices to witches. If a black cat crosses your path, it's bad luck or good luck, depending on who you ask. The cat frequently appears as a folktale character, and in Alice in Wonderland, it takes on the form of the ever-grinning Cheshire cat. In cartoons, the dim-witted cat is often outdone by the cunning mouse. Oh my god, bash.org doesn't exist anymore? this notion out the window. The cat remains an impressive hunter. But yes, Bella, it is, it is a specific... A figure of great reference. power. Strength. Agility. Ferocity. For those of you that don't and remember an it, object of fear. Bash.org, which I hope is like archived in full somewhere, Cats is prefer a, a vantage point from which they a can see website that used to collect like IRC chat, silent log memes before surprising their unsuspecting prey. And while a cat may have nine lives, a mouse does not. Back in my day. Memes were all text based. Whether they move on the little with. or big cat's feet, the memes. cat remains the supreme predator. But we love you, Bill Butt. His name's Butt. Tripod Ted. That dog clearly has four legs. Tripod Ted is valor stealing. 
from three-legged dogs. Are we getting a making up segment for the original series? I love wireframe camera on tripod. The Eyewitness Museum, created by combining traditional filmmaking techniques with state-of-the-art graphics, stripping away the mysteries of nature and science to reveal the essence of each subject. Bringing the world into sharp focus. The making of eyewitness. Yay! The distinct style of the eyewitness books is the basis for each of the programs. Each half-hour episode is based on a book title. The eyewitness book's visual style gives the program makers a starting point and a challenge. The challenge of transferring the clarity and super-realism into moving images and sound. Now let's take a look behind the scenes at the making of Cat. A distinctive element of the Eyewitness series is the white background. By placing animals in a carefully lit neutral background, we can isolate <laughs> them from their usual surroundings, bringing a new clarity to oh. our understanding. Big cats, however, you, demand respect. They get a bigger cage than the cameraman. The tigers needed half an hour to acclimatize to the setting before work could begin. I've um, Our prime concern was to make the animal comfortable, both for its welfare and the success of our footage. I think I've told this story on a Golden News Year stream before, but uh, I used to work for a company in L.A. that meat. did theme park rides. That's where we did, like, Justice League Battle for Metropolis and a bunch of other stuff. Um, and they shared office space. Like, the owner of the company was friends with this dude who ran a production company that made demanded a specific action. Really bad movies aimed at kids, but all it featured took a while to communicate like this to wild animals. He had to jump onto a box in which the camera was hidden. So at one point, and this guy would just... Uh, the action was for real. I don't want to say too much because you could probably figure out who these people are and I don't want that. But th this guy would... He was just this obnoxious guy that would always be on the phone, like taking phone calls really loudly in our office. Um, and he... But at one point they made... They like used our office where we worked on computers to do like video games and animation stuff. Uh, and we had like big racks of servers and workstations everywhere, but it was all just in this big industrial warehouse. After filming um, on white, so they like cleared out room in the center of the warehouse, and this they laid down. The they needed to film a scene with a tiger, in like a full adult-sized tiger. background can later be turned into any background. So they put down sawdust all over the floor for the tiger to walk on, because in the scene it was like you know on dirt. Uh, so they filled the office with sawdust case, and put up a big black a curtain. Escape. They brought in this huge tiger, and we were all there. We, the tiger was on, like, a chain, and they brought it in, and they had trainers and everything. Um, this and they filmed their little scene, take us anywhere. and then they had to star cat looks out break on it all down and get rid of the sawdust and everything. Studio. And, like, it only took them a few hours, but they had carted in all this Meanwhile, sawdust and put it on the floor and had a tiger set, walk around it with just and a then piece of rope move it all out. And, the blue screen. and so the air was, like, no one could breathe. When filming wildlife, it's important. There was to keep a film of sawdust on everything, on our computer the screens, on our workstations, like clogging up the fans of all the computers, and everyone was like coughing and wheezing. Um, By photographing big and small cats, and like white, we were having trouble breathing, and you know, it was just like, well, you work for an animation studio, keep doing animation. Um, able to bring the and eventually, my, my act of rebellion was to like leave focus. for two hours and go to Home Depot and buy respirators for everyone with my own money, which I realize in hindsight is not that great an act of rebellion. Like uh, my act of rebellion should have been like, "Hey, I'm leaving. We should all leave. Call us when you've cleared up this fucking sawdust, and we'll and can provide a safe work environment again." Um, anyway, that was fun. That, that's my story about seeing a tiger up close. Oh, that woman. Is that from Human Body? What's going on? 
Anyway, I do have a photo somewhere on like Facebook of of Tiger Time from long, long ago. I don't know if I have it easily accessible though. Anyway, that was Eyewitness Cat. Thank you to uh, Green Day Rock actually for sending that one in. The tiger's name was not Sawdust. Uh, I don't know if they were ever in. I can't remember the name of the production company anymore. I know I could find it out, but I'm not going to. <laughs> uh, but I think they were like post VHS. I don't know if any of their stuff is on VHS. There was a day that they brought a lion cub into work, and it was like, it was a dog-friendly workplace. Like, everybody brought their dogs in. My boss had a border collie who was really, really sweet. The border collie's name was Gilroy because he, had, he came from Gilroy, California. Um, and other people had their dogs, and so we... we there was a day where they brought in a lion cub, and the dogs were, like, playing with the lion cub. It was great. Anyway, Facebook is trash. It's a trash website, so I don't know how to find the post, and I'm, I don't care enough <laughs> to pull up the photo of the lion cub, but it was very cute. Uh, let's watch another tape, I guess. Website. I'm starting to feel a little tired, which is, um, I guess, understandable because, uh, oh, if you find it, if you find it, Haley, email it. Email it to me at my email address, and so then I can easily pull it up. Non-Biggles Kid Songs. Okay. Sure. Kid Songs. Uh, Kid Songs Unscreened. We do have good night sleep tight. Let's do let's do what I want to be. That one's been favorited a few times. Oh, and this one just has the songs listed instead of awkwardly interspersed in the copy. Oh, and it has Mike the dog. All right, let's do it. I'm gonna go get kid songs. What I want to be. Number 286. Okay, that helps. Sorry, folks, there are boxes of tapes, like, everywhere in front of the shelf. It's hard to get my body into a good viewing position to find things. Uh, okay. Let's see. Let me download this photo that Haley has emailed me. Welcome, first timer Arceus. Good to see you. Uh, let's see. Image. 
This is a photo. Whoops. Crap. No, it's not. This. This is going to be a photo. Thank you, OBS. Um, so yeah, this was this was at the office. That's a baby white lion cub. That's one of my coworkers' dogs on the left there. Oh, and there's Gilroy in the back. Gilroy was a good dog. Very, very smart, very well-trained Border Collie. I, I haven't spoken to my old boss in like eight years, but I am friends with him on Facebook, and I saw that he, he posted when Gilroy died. Uh, and so I, I made sure to leave, a, leave a, a message eulogizing Gilroy because he was a very good dog. Anyway, that was a lion cub. It was surprisingly big. This is Kid Songs, What I Want to Be, a tape that is, in fact, rewound. Let's do it. What I Want to Be, play along with the Kid Songs kids as they imagine all of the wonderful careers they can have when they grow up. Climb aboard a fire truck and slide down the pole with real life fire traders. Take a cruise on a crow car credit. Ride a bug and bronco and sample the goodies as candy Hi, factory. Hi, I'm oh, Sergio no. Centeno. And I'm Tiffany Burton. And we're the Biggles. Oh, the Biggles are in you this one. You know that you can find all your favorite kid songs music videos on home video. And boy, are they. I think great. they're just in the intro. Each home intro, video though. is about something kids love, like animals. Let's show the kids some really cute animals. Bye, little monkey. Why are they putting the promos at the beginning? I'm turning the volume down. This is, uh, so this is under the Sony Wonder labeling instead of the Warner Brothers labeling. So I think this is, this is a later run of this original Hit Songs tape. Yeah, the program is copyright 1987. But this is like repackaged from later on when, when the Biggles were a thing. So it has different like promotion material. Oh my god. And our A Day Act series follows the Kid Songs kids on singing and dancing adventures to really fun places like Old McDonald's Farm. Uh, oh, the Scarecrow. That's right. They're, Kid Songs is a real mess. <laughs> like, it's reasonably well produced. Sometimes the kids can sing all right. Sometimes. Sometimes the Biggles are there. It, there's like a different horror every... A different fresh horror with every tape. There's, there's sometimes Mr. World is there. Sometimes it's a scarecrow. In like scarecrow, scarecrow blackface. It just varies so wildly. Mr. World was great. I never thought I'd miss Mr. World the way I do. And now we have the all new Kid Songs I Can series two. It stars me and my big sister Ruby. Check it out. I hate the Biggles so much. The original songs are so bad. This song is, this is like, these are Tim and Eric songs, like Peanut Butter, just a song about peanut butter. You can't tell me these weren't written by Tim Heidecker as comedy. As I've never seen so many feet in my whole... No, big old man. No. And since we all like to sing our kids' songs wherever we go, there are matching audio collections, too. We want our kids to 
So look for the Colorful Kids Songs logo. Coming soon to a minivan CD player near you. We want The Kids Songs audio and video collection, they're the greatest. See ya. See ya. Bye. No, it ha- oh god. Like, when I was a kid, I feel like I mostly was exposed to... Oh, this is a different... A different intro graphic for Together Again Productions. Sorry. Um, let's get that Sony wonder. Bye. The wonder of Sony. I have a pretty sizable pile of... Um, I'm getting tap as a separate one. Uh, of I have a pretty sizable pile of intro graphics at this point that I've collected into a, into a folder. It's kids' songs. What I want to be. Oh, that's a belt. There's so many things that you could be. It's hard to choose the one you want. Yeah, we were in Biggles Land, and now we get back. We go back to the Halcyon days of 1987 with the original Kids Songs Kids. When you grow up, what do you wanna be? Oh, tell me. Oh, it's the dog. Exactly what the Coast Guard is about singing and dancing. I think the, t the Coast Guard takes people on sea cruises. Tell me, what do you wanna be? I think they like protect maritime shipping lanes. You could be, you could join the Coast Guard, or you could be a trucker. I don't like this. A dark and stormy night. A truck driver. <laughs> with a very sinister look on his face. With a K 
kid in his truck for some reason. Ah! Don't tussle his hair. This is a tragic song about how much it sucks to be a truck driver. Do you want to drive your life away? This feels as tone deaf as like playing Born, at, Born in the USA as, at a Republican political rally. Reminds me, my. Uh, I went to an express oil change several months back and got an oil change. And when I took my car home and parked it in the garage, I noticed it was uh, leaking profuse amounts of motor oil on the ground. So I immediately drove it back to the express oil change the following day, and told them, and they were like, "Oh, I guess they broke a gasket or over tightened something or something." And they were like, "Oh, we fixed this bolt." We replaced this bolt, and now you're all good. We fixed it. And that did stem the flow, but uh, there are still random puddles of oil that appear on my garage. And we left the car in the garage for two weeks on vacation, came back. The garage smelled suspiciously like motor oil. Um, so now I have to go back to that place and be like, fuck you. One, Fix this, three, which they probably don't even have the expertise to do. I did. I have been checking the the oil level on the dipstick, and, it, and it's still been like close enough to full, like within the range of not not a problem. But yeah, I hmm. I'm gonna have to find a better place to get my oil change. Yeah, I mean, I guess I can. I, w I guess my plan is Good to morning, call children. and talk to the the manager, whoever's in charge. And now this morning we're going to work on the alphabet. And see if they will be, you know, make make things whole. Or if I need to take it to a mechanic and just get it paid, eat the cost. This is just the alphabet. Oh, is it you could be a teacher? Hey. Ooh, double time. Wonderful. I want to be Peter Gabriel. Man, I I am feeling increasingly tired. It's fine. I can't I can't go to bed because I need to readjust to the time zone. But I've been thinking lately. We have a lot of tapes. Um, I've been looking more seriously at like contract work and stuff because I do need to kind of like have a job. Um, so I'm trying to think of how to solve this problem. Like, how do I, how do I continue to go, go through tapes and stream them? 
job while also having other obligations in my life. And I'm like, what if I just... What if I just make myself a ping tuber? But it's just like images of my face on camera. But I just am kind of like Tom goes to the mayor. Um, and then I can like look at other stuff while streaming without without it giving the appearance that I'm. Um, I will sell my nudes to you, Haley. Maybe there's a good second-hand market for them. I don't know. Do people, I've always only said ping. What else do you say? PNG? I mean, you don't say JPG or GIF. I guess the real question is, is it ping or is it peeng? Plastic bag and do the twisty thing, you too. The garbage man. Yes, the garbage man can. A thousand bits, thank you, from Jacebook. Sorry, kid songs, I'm afraid you no longer know what kids love. Yes, after some psychological research with the University of Jazz Penguins, I can conclude that kids love Brazilian jazz drumming. Specifically, Song of Sunny from Brazilian Coordination of the Drum Set. All right, thank you, Jason. Hundreds That candy man is on cocaine. What is he even doing? Those kids need hair nets. Who can take tomorrow? Dip it in a dream. Separate the sorrow and collect up all the cream. The candy man. Oh, the candy man can. I do love the Candyman's performance. He's really going ham. What do you wanna be? Oh. Sorrow Cream Separato. Buongiorno, I am Soro Cream Separato. I couldn't tell for a moment if that skeleton was part of the ghost or part of the so kid songs. Be a doctor, well, they're getting there is slow. A whole lot of school to learn the things you gotta know. We're going to call on our friend, the skeleton, and name these bones one by one. We got the foot bones. This song is terrible. <laughs> I love, I kind of love how terrible it is. Now what we've got here is the lower half of the body beautiful, and that's no laugh. The other bones of the body. Okay, I actually suddenly love this tape. Let me, um, let me record this song in its entirety. We have to, I'm sorry.
So you wanna be a doctor? Well, they're getting there is slow. A whole lot of school to learn the things you gotta know. We're going to call on our friend, the skeleton, and name these bones one by one. All you have to do to be a doctor is know that the, the <laughs> connect the hip bones. <laughs> know the names of like six now bones. Here is the lower yeah. Of the body you, you don't need to know like the individual bones in the foot. It's sufficient to just know that, that those are all like foot foot stuff. We're all just made of bones. Nothing no, uh, just bones. Ah, the body bones, of course. We got the finger bones. Connect the hand bones. Connect the arm bones. Connect the shoulder bones. I'm sorry, sir. You had a your you and me are gonna play your a pinky toe on your right foot was gangrenous, and we had to amputate. But, but we had to actually remove your entire foot because the surgeon only knows the word foot. <laughs> We have no way to specify a more precise region of the foot to be amputated. And all these bones together make the curvy backbone. Now that is good, and now you all know how the bones fit together from a hip to toe. Just stand close together and do your thing. We put all the bones together again as we sing. One, two, say what's in your shoe? The hip bones connected to the shin bones. The shin bones connected to the <laughs> yes, all of the bones together. Oh my god. Tell me, what do you wanna be? <laughs> a thousand bits from Will Peters. Uh, sorry, a hundred bits from Will Peters. I'm a little tired. Now there needs to be a song about medical malpractice. Kyakubito. Will Peters. Let's just go with that. Mr. Bones Wild Ride. Oh my god. <laughs> Mr. California Highway Patrol. The, the heroic, like, triumph of the will uh, shots. fine. Um, Terminator 2 made me afraid of cops as a kid. Why did they park that cruiser on the beach? He's got a gun! That kid on the left has a gun. She's got a gun. Chocolate and banana. Thank you. You're welcome. Where were you? We were chasing our puppy and we got lost. They invented a whole story about. Uh, Hey, Green Day, a thousand bits for a, another God's property. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, happy to satisfy you with more, more Kirk Franklin. What do you wanna be? Oh, tell me. What do you wanna be? 
No, I think we need a palate cleanser after this. You're welcome to um, pick any of these songs. We have, we've gotten a whole. We started out the stream with the Hall of Fame of song requests. Royal Terrell Museum is literally the only one we haven't watched, other than other Brazilian drums. When I get done riding, they're gentle and kind. Cause I'm the best you see. Oh, I'm a rodeo. That's fine. A lot of people weren't here, I, I bet. And, and everyone would be happy to hear more God's property. There's no cowboy that can do it quite the same. God, we're, this has only been 22 minutes. We're at we're at 23 on the tape counter. Jesus. Songs. What do you want to be? About 12 times. Sea cruise. Driving my life away. Riding like you never seen. Over and under and upside down. Her horse and her make a team. Yes, I'm a rodeo Regular Annie Oakley over there. Nothing that I can't change. Yes, I'm a rodeo We got one, two, buckle my shoe. School days, the alphabet song. I want to be a fireman, candy man, them bones, Mr. Policeman, rodeo rider, and act naturally. Act naturally, the Beatles song? Or no, sorry, that's a... Tell me, what do you want to be? Oh, a ruby song! That's a Buck Owens song. Well, it was written by Johnny Russell and was performed by both Buck Owens and the Beatles. So I'm right all the way around. Hey! Big star out of me. Sad and lonely, and all I gotta do is act naturally. I'll make the scene about a man that's sad and lonely, Begging down upon his bended knee. I'll play the part, but I won't need rehearsing, cause all I have to do is act naturally. They don't even do the refrain. This isn't a song about being a movie star. It's a song about being sad. I'm gonna be a big star. Might win an Oscar. You can wait and see. The movie's gonna make me a big star. Cause I can play the part so well. Hope you come see me in the movie. Then I know that you will plainly see biggest fool that's ever hit the big time and all i gotta do is act naturally Chris, how are you oh fine thanks did you enjoy working with mike it was just marvelous and uh do you plan on making another movie yeah wonderful and i'm not going to talk to mike hi mike we understand you're the it's proud mike. of 10 puppies that's wonderful are you planning on going to town you are that's terrific you were super marvelous and Chris. You are a wonderful co-star. Co-star? All I do is act naturally. Oh, Mike. We had a thousand bits. Sorry, the dog was a lot, and I had to I had to pay attention to the dog. We had a thousand bits from Zelda. Uh, Jesus. Things are popping up here. 50 bits from Zelda Master for Mike. Thank you, Zelda Master. Uh, and a thousand bits from seemingly Jess. If you insist, Royal, roll that Royal Terrell. Okay. Coast Guard, trucker, teacher, fireman, candy man, doctor, police officer, rodeo rider, or movie star. Those are the careers. Coast Star to dog, yeah. Sorry, the kids are shouting woman to make that song gender inclusive. I do not. 
There's a lot of things I'm not catching. Yeah, let's get woman. Let's grab woman. And then let's stop this song. Was it before this? Uh All right, we grabbed woman. Let's uh, be done with this tape, perhaps. Always around to protect and serve. Watching out for us day and night. Ah. What do you want to be? Oh. Tell me. What do you want to be? Oh. When you grow up. Okay, I can go ahead and start queuing up um, the things hey, that we want to have and it. played on the screen next. We're going to do God's property. We're going to do Royal Terrell. We're going to do a little bonus here. We're going to do... Jeez, uh, now what's the one, the one we want? The one we want is the one that's in this directory, and it is called... It is this? Okay, wait, can I do more of these? Yeah. Okay. These are all great. Open. Excellent. All right. Uh, here we go with some things that people requested. Uh, this. Uh, I really screwed these up. This was just a good song. Adventure Resolve is stupid. And I forgot to make these 4 by 3 the bass guitar, all right? Uh, and then it's a bonus because everyone, we have <laughs> seen every single song requested and I want to congratulate you for that. Vladimir Kerb? Alberta. Their life. These uh, fossils have been difficult to in interpret. Uh, originally, they were thought to be jellyfish and giant worms. But later, scientists said, uh, we can't see eyes, we can't see a mouth, we can't see an anus. Are these things even animals? And it was thought that perhaps these Very are... Anus. Yourself all the way around. Now, notice that Christian has a slightly forward posture this in his waist. This is a bunch of random his stuff that I have clipped for possible alerts. Uh, but have not actually done anything with. Just, just raw video. The count, I just really liked this countdown. <laughs> Dino discount. Did you lock it? Yeah, I did. I got a bad feeling about this. Or 
dollars for 67, 68, 69. That'll just about do her. I forgot how bad the quality of Psychopunk was. But what about the wetness? And, and what about the unevenness of it? It's not like it's been cored. And what about the bleeding of it, the wetness of it that is not, you don't see tubes spurting, you don't see blood drip. All right. Thank you for that. Thank you to everyone who has who is, uh, cheered for songs and everything today. We just gotten so much. So I've gotten such a generous welcome back that I that I <laughs> wanted to throw in a bunch of random stuff. Um, okay, I think I could do maybe maybe one more tape or maybe a series of bad tapes that we only watched ten minutes of. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna go to the shelf and just pick a few things. All right, let's do that. All right, um, I picked a few things here, just starting from the beginning of the collection. Uh, let's check out Day of Discovery. And let's actually um, make sure that we clear kit songs because we have not been watching it in quite a while. Day, Day of Discovery Video Club, The Miracles of Jesus. This is Tape 41. Dave Discovery offers you a variety of Is This Rewound? Yes. Let's go. I'm skipping the formalities. I'm not switching to the VCR cam so you can see the gratuitous footage of this tape being inserted. We're just going to go for it. We're going to get rolling. We're going to see what we see. Uh, Dave Discovery offers you a variety of programming each week. The Bible will come alive in Holy Land Adventures. With RBC President Ministries Mark DeHaan and Mid-East Journalist Jimmy DeYoung. Okay. You'll also hear... Oh, we're already doing it. Uh, five minutes of this. <laughs> Is this a DVD menu on a VHS tape? Day of Discovery Video Club. Judea, the land and story of the Bible. It's a dog. The land and story of the Bible. The landscape, the land of the Bible, has been likened both to the playing board on which the game is played or the stage on which the drama takes place. And here, according to the unfolding story oh. of the Bible, our Creator chose one place on earth to show His desire to live among His people. Join us for a road tour of Judea, the land and story of the Bible, on this day of discovery. She's a very good dog.
All right, back to this. This is the land of the Bible. Here, according to the ancient Jewish scriptures, the God of creation chose a small piece of land to reveal the terms on which he would live among the people of the world. Here between the continents of Africa, Asia, and Europe, stretching from Lebanon in the north to Egypt in the south, the God of the Bible chose an that intercontinental bridge Asia on which to settle well, his I guess Turkey is Asia and minor. build a temple that would be a house of prayer for all nations. All right, when you're done with this, an overview of Israel reveals Just tell me that you're done. geographic regions. Galilee in the north. It's been two and a half minutes. Samaria in the central hill country. Judea in the arid south. And Transjordan across the Jordan River Valley. The region of Judea, though not blessed with abundant natural resources, became the most blessed location because that's where the God of the Bible would choose as the center and focus of his plan to live not only among the people this of Israel, is, <laughs> but all the people. This is a guy doing a Microsoft Sandwich. Today, impression. Mark DeHaan and Jimmy DeYoung are in Judea. Uh, let's meet these two. To and explore then what the we'll Bible regards as the better. geographical, political, and spiritual center of the world. Let's fetishize Israel. There's no geopolitical ramifications of doing that. Which is the Temple Mount here in the city of Jerusalem. And what's so interesting is that we're actually standing on a ridge. If we take just a few steps across the road, we're going to get an entirely different picture. Just on the other side of the Mount of Olives. Okay, that's a dramatic change, isn't it, of perspective? Just across the street from where we were overlooking the old city on the Temple Mount, the new city of Jerusalem. This is the northern end of the Mount of Olives, where Mount Scopus and the Mount of Olives actually come together. You can see where the desert begins. So Jerusalem is perched right here on the edge of the desert, looking out to the east. We can see down through the Judean wilderness, all the way down to the Dead Sea. And that's where. All right, thank you for watching Day of Discovery uh, from RBC Ministries. Are you ready for our next tape? Our next tape is 90 minutes. And it is, let me yeah, get this fuck. Our next tape is 90 minutes long and it is entitled Close Encounters of the God Kind. Uh with Jesse Duplantis. Let's open her up. JV-28, PO Box 20149, New Orleans, Louisiana. From Jesse Duplantis Ministries, preaching the gospel to the world. Tape number 47 in the Golden VCR Library. Close Encounters of the God Kind. Uh, here we go. Jesse's close encounters of the God kind have been a tremendous blessing to thousands. This inspiring testimony of Jesse's experience in heaven will touch your heart as it answers some of your now questions about heaven. This simple sermon, why should I be saved? How should You won't I want be to miss this amazing message. It will I change saved? your life. I accepted Jesus Christ when I could not see him because he is my savior. But when I stand before him and lay these eyes on him, he will not be my savior he will be my judge if you wait till you can see him I'm going mono you won't have a prayer he will say depart from me you worker of iniquity i never knew you now whether you like that or not oh my god jace funny, uh welcome back no we didn't when you cannot see him that'll be a great palate cleanser after this won't it the only way you're gonna please god don't wait till you can see him why should I be saved? Okay, this is a promo for a different a different wait, sermon. He will be your judge. I did plan it very well. And now our feature video. Let's see if this one has stereo. Nope. I like his graphics. His rhetorical style Genesis is something. One. 
And I want to start reading with verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. I am curious now, about How many of you want to know his experience like? in heaven. He looks like me. <laughs> he looks like you. We're made in his image. Why do you act the way you act, Brother like Jesse? A, I'm made in his likeness. Oh, nope. Let me tell you something about God. He's not quiet. He is a noisy God. He's theatrical in the things that he does. Think about that. When he came up to the Red Sea, the Bible said with a blast of his nostrils, the sea departed. He blew his nose and the sea just hooked it. Bless God, got out the way. He's an all-consuming, powerful God. And he's loud, very noisy. He don't walk around like this. He don't do that. He is loud. One day he's coming back, he's going to holler so loud, he's going to blow your grandma right out the grave. <laughs> he's so Jesse God. Duplantis is a, a charismatic... He expresses what he feels. Like capital C charismatic evangelical you need Christian to know preacher him tonight. based in New Orleans, Louisiana. He said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness... His theo Verse theological 6. beliefs are a combination of charismatic prosperity, gospel, and wor word of faith doctrines. So if you're a fisherman, you ought to catch fish. If you've got dominion over the fowl of the air, if you're a bird, honey, you ought to get birds. Over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created him. Male and female created he them and Oh, God he was on the board of regents at Oral Roberts God University. And God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful. Oh, my God. <laughs> and multiply. He and was a, the earth. a regent along and with Creflo Dollar, forget, another prosperity words. gospel. And subdue it. Kind of an odd word. Televangelist. And subdue it. See, God was hinting to Adam that in a perfect society, there are going to be some things get out of line. So subdue it. Put it down. What he was saying was, snake coming. <laughs> snake coming. Subdue it. Put it down. Snake, come and see. My father, when I lived with him, he subdued me. I never forget his famous words. He used to tell me, boy, I brought you here. I can take you out. Don't mess with me, son. I'll kill you and make another one look just like you. And I'd say, okay, okay, dad. <laughs> he would subdue. Yeah, let's get snake coming. And let's, let's be done. live with him he subdued me all these prosperity gospel televangelists like they are they are the snakes they're like forget preaching all this shit and subdue it kind of an odd word and subdue it see god was hinting to adam that in a perfect society there gonna be some things get out of line so subdue it put it down what he was saying was snake coming Snake coming. Subdue it. Put it down. Snake coming. See? I love snake coming. Um, yeah, okay. Sorry, I was just reading a little more about Jesse Duplantis here. In May 2018, national news media outlets reported that Duplantis had asked his followers to donate money to him so that he could buy a Dassault Falcon 7X valued at, seven, uh, valued at $54 million. He was two inches from his nose, and God said he breathed into him. Duplantis said that his organization, Jesse Duplantis Ministries, had already paid for three private jets by 2006, and he had been using them by just burning them up for the Lord Jesus Christ. Duplantis defended his choice by saying, I really believe that if Jesus was physically on the earth today, he wouldn't be riding a donkey. Think about that for a minute. He'd be in an airplane preaching the gospel all over the world. In response to a wave of criticism, Duplantis stated on his ministry website, I'm not asking you to pay for my plane. I'm asking you to pray for my plane. In 2016, Duplantis and fellow televangelist Kenneth Copeland defended their use of private jets with the claim that commercial planes were full of demons. I fast forwarded right. he some. Said, you, he called my wife my maid. He said, your maid, you will be sleeping with your maid. She will not awaken. She will not hear but the Lord will come to see you. And I thought, my God, man, okay. So I stayed up all night that night and nothing happened. 
I stayed up three or four days, nothing happened. Two weeks passed by, nothing happened. And I was so aggravated and vexed, I said, that guy missed it. Good to you, one thing. You know, they ought to burn him like they did them prophets that missed it in the Old Testament. <laughs> I mean, I was just irritated. Other issues. I on my back, I was just sleeping on my stomach. And I looked and I fell Jesus off Christ, I hate this guy. In the, morning, the Trinity just, Foundation I'm of Dallas, a religious watchdog way. organization, has kept an eye on Duplantis for more than 10 years. The organization's man, president said that because of Duplantis' tax exemption, exemption technically every person in St. Charles Parish was helping to pay for his extravagant lifestyle. Just blow, and the curtains came up over and on top the rods, blowing up. And I'm in the aftermath of 2021's Hurricane stuff. Ida, Duplantis has faced criticism for his ministry's perceived lack of response to helping the community. Happening. And I heard this voice ask me, you asked to see me, turn around. And I went, no, <laughs> His church resides in St. Charles Parish, where some 95% of the residences remained without power for weeks after the storm. St. Charles Parish was one of the hardest hit areas. In response, Duplantis said that the church had donated $100,000 in generators to the community. A few weeks later, Duplantis claimed that the second coming was held up by a lack of donations to his ministry while touting his multimillionaire status. And I went, oh, no, man. He is still alive. I didn't know what to do. My flesh was literally jumping like this. The first thing I thought of, Kathy. Kathy. So I'm like this, and I go, get up. Get up. And I'm hit, I bruised Kathy's arm with a bruise this big. I am hitting it. She goes, <sighs> <sighs> I'm so mad at her. I really, I, oof. Get, get, God's in the room. Get up. Get up. I mean, I'm hitting her. I bruised her. She never woke up. The prophecy was coming to pass. Yeah, there's a lot of domestic and abuse here. The third time, I'll never forget it. Said, you asked to see me. Now, you got to understand when, physical when. I'm not talking spirit. I'm talking physical. The curtain's flying everywhere. My wife's snoring. Can't get her up. Bless God. I'm scared to look at God. We got trouble here. We don't know what to do. So the, he's personally visited by Almighty God because he's special and you should give him money, I guess. That was Close Encounters of the God Kind with Jesse Duplantis. Thank you for watching that tape in its entirety. Uh, eh, we're done with that one. Okay. Let me, um, let me roll drums. Actually, what if we do Conquering Your Greatest Adversary with Rod Parsley? D-Day for the Devil. Declare D-Day for the Devil and Conquer Your Greatest Adversary. Or we can save that for another time. If you, if you guys have had to, to all you can take of this. Should we roll drums? Should we roll drums? Or should we meet Rod Parsley? Let's get it done. Okay. All right. Thank you for your patience, Jace Fuck. We will, we will uh, be watching some Brazilian drums in just a moment. For right now, let me go get a uh, close... No. Oh, shit. I don't have it pulled up in the right thing. Conquering your greatest adversary with Rod Parsley. Declare D-Day for the devil. Conquer your greatest adversary. Uh. Whether it's gossip, unforgiveness, or lust, or addiction, the devil's destructive devices too often keep people from God's best for their lives. But when Satan has a plan to take you out, God has a plan to keep you in. He has given you powerful weapons to cast down every stronghold your enemy has raised against you. You can learn how to win the battle for your mind. Discover God's arsenal of spiritual weapons. Pastor Rod Parsley shares life-changing revelation that can help conquer your greatest adversary and live a victorious and overcoming life before God. This is tape number two. We're getting to some old ones. They've been with us for far too long. Ecclesiastes, that's what you're looking for. Oh, and I need to go back to not mono. 
Ecclesiastes. You know, you were there several times this week, I'm sure, in your study. It's a book you often frequent. The book of Ecclesiastes. Hallelujah. We'll begin in chapter 3 with verse 1. To everything there is a season. Just touch your neighbor and say, this too shall pass. And a time to every purpose under heaven. There is a time to be born. I do still have there every tape we've ever watched. That will change at some point. There is a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. I have thought about adding a Reverse rating three, please. system uh, so that tapes can be rated like User, user, we can have user submitted ratings of each tape so that as we watch them, there could be like a chat command that just lets you lock in your rating, like three stars, five stars, whatever. Um, in which case, I would do like maybe a retrospective stream where we just go back through all, like get a just for a couple minutes, like on each tape, go through the tapes we've watched Verse and rate six. them <laughs> retroactively. Um, and then there would be like a rating threshold where we, if something was not <laughs> notable or worth worth uh, keeping it could get thrown out and then there the rest of the stuff could go love into and a time to hate if so, the things that are truly great can be hall of fame candidates and there uh, is a time and then the rest peace. get like put into bankers boxes in the garage or something. you may be seated second corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5 in your bible record words along these lines the weapons of our warfare are not carnal mm fleshly but they are mighty through god this is um a sermon just a sermon just a kind of a plain plain old evangelical church sermon uh so i'm fast forwarding slightly uh to see what else is on what else we get we don't even get like close-up shots of rod <clears throat> it's mostly wide <laughs> shots of the congregation. It's gonna get dark soon. Um, and then we'll be done with that. I do. This is a very quiet tape with a lot of hiss. I boosted it six decibels. Remind me to undo that. Oh man, I kind of want to make a tomato throw command where you can like. It's like in World War II movies where they're like calling in artillery strikes. You can throw a tomato and then you can be like, adjust your adjust your angle <laughs> two degrees left. Fire 30, 30 meters down range. Uh, okay. So that it hits the part of the screen that you want it to hit. Started praising him and praying for somebody else and all of a sudden your back starts aching and you get a bad report from the doctor and everything you've used to this point becomes ineffective unuseful and god says the weapons of your warfare are not carnal but they are mighty Rod Rodney Lee, Rodney Lee Parsley is a prominent American Christian minister, author, television host, and evangelist. Senior pastor of World Harvest Church. Wringing your hands and saying, oh my God, what am I going to do about this? Because when you ask him, what am I going to do about this? Senior pastor of World Harvest Church, a non-denominational evangelical megachurch based in Columbus, Ohio. Does he begin to talk back to you? Can I get a witness from somebody? He's founder and chancellor of Valor Christian College. You tried mental reasoning. You tried your private Bible college. You found it inability. You fell short of the mark, but don't hang your head, lift up your head. Page 181 in the New Testament. Now, y'all didn't leave me a bit of time to preach this morning.
Whew. It's Romans 8. The Wikipedia articles Verse are the best 30. part of these <laughs> evangelist tapes. Parsley has been identified as a prominent player in the so-called Dominionist movement by both Theocracy Watch and commentator in Bill fact, Moyers. I, I feel him. Everybody just he is opposed to the idea that there is separation of church and state in the U.S. Constitution. Point your finger at verse 31. Which is kind of a wild position, <laughs> given Let how clear that is. Dominionism is a group Watch of Christian political ideologies that seeks to institute a nation governed by Christian. Shouting? It's basically they want theocracy in the U.S. Uh, he's very vocally anti-Islam, violated federal tax laws. What shall we then say to these things? What shall we then say to these things? According to author I think we better put it in author the Chris Hedge's 2006 I book, American Fascist, the, the Christian Right in the War on America, Quoted Parsley is using militaristic metaphors in a sermon concerning say, his what critics. Shall we then say to these things, if Quote, God the secular media never likes it when I say this, so let me say it twice. Man your battle stations. Ready your weapons. They say this rhetoric is so inciting. I came to incite a riot. Man your battle stations. Ready your weapons. Lock and load. For the 30, 40 liberal pastors who filed against our ministry with the Internal Revenue Service, let the struggle begin. Let it begin in your heart today with a shout unto him who has called us to war. Okay. Who can be? Be seated. Look at him. Well, that's Rod Parsley. This is a great welcome back to me to America. Actually, what's more American than uh, tax fraud evangelical megachurch televangelist pastors screaming? You won't find that in in Japan. Okay. Well, we have successfully gotten through Day of Discovery Video Club, Close Encounters of the God Kind with Jesse Duplantis and Conquering Your Greatest Adversary with Rod Parsley. Thank you um, to everyone who has allowed those to leave the shelf. Oh, okay. We have done it. We have made it to the last tape that I picked randomly from the shelf. Which isn't a televangelist. It's the spirit of the game, the etiquette program from the United States Golf Association, featuring Arnold Palmer, everyone's favorite golf grandpa. Take Arnold Palmer's advice. Spend a few moments watching this video. Find out why it is so vital that all golfers possess the spirit of the game. Rewound. There's the official, very official looking, what's more American than that, seal of the United States Golf Association. This makes the, this makes the United States Golf Association and its etiquette program look like it's a, a federally funded, constitutionally mandated agency. Uh, all right. Oh, yeah, there was a golf. We stayed in an Airbnb in uh, Breckenridge, Haley and I, with her parents when we went skiing. And there was a, I forget what it was called, but it was like a, a Christian devotional book about, it's like God is my caddy or something about golf. G golf metaphors applied to Christianity and how to, how to live your life. In his grip. It was called In His Grip. <laughs> it was very good. Uh, actually, before we do this, let's watch the uh, jazz. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little tired today. Can't imagine why. Um, we had, what was it? From Jay's book, A Thousand Bits for Song of Sunny. That's what it was. Golden VCR clips. Song of the Sun. Here we go. Let me make sure I take the VCR. Yeah, we don't want it boosted by six decibels anymore.
Sunny Beach. Solstice, excellent. Yeah, we've had the, the Friends feature for a few streams, but it has been a while since we've streamed. If you're, if you're, if it's new to you, it works the same way as Ghosts. But instead of asking for ghostly images to haunt the VCR, you are requesting a little friend characters that will join us on screen for a moment. the bacon trader. Gifted a sub to Bacon Tractor. Thank you, Bella. It could also be BA Contractor. But probably Bacon Tractor. That's 300 subs in total out of the 10 that is the goal. I've never figured out how that how to configure that, <laughs> but thank you for the three hundred the three hundredth sub ever ever awarded. Uh, I kind of hope I don't get partner because I don't need that much official attention from Twitch. Um, hooray! Let's watch. B -b 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 golf. It's the spirit of the game, the etiquette program for the United States Golf Association. Arnold Palmer approached the USGA and asked to help spread the word about why et etiquette on the golf course is so important. Thus, the spirit of the game was born. Using LPGA and PGA professionals along with celebrities and everyday golfers. I need this logo, please. Yeah, USGA. United States Golf Association. United States Golf Association is proud to present this program. Oh, this sounds chill. I expected this to be chill. That's really what I'm going for. Oh, it has a video index. Honesty and integrity. The teeing ground. Course condition. Putting greens. Base of play. Walking and riding. Manners and behavior. This video may be viewed in its entirety or by individual segments. This is apparently a, what, 50-something minute I've video? I've got something on my mind about the game I love so much. And maybe you can help me with it. As more and more people learn to play golf, they should realize there's more to this game than hitting the ball as far as Tiger Woods does. They must recognize something my dad taught me the very first day I went out to play. Always respect the game. Respect the course you're playing on. And most importantly, respect the people you're playing with. 
for over 60 years, I followed that advice. I'm People really tempted to let this play Arnold, and run to the gas station and buy a canned Arizona Arnold Palmer. The you did when you were a kid. The answer is easy, because I learned the true spirit of the game. Okay. I hope you do also. It's a direct correlation to life in general. And if you're honest with yourself, if I call a penalty on yourself, um, you'll be that way throughout life. You can't cheat in golf. It's just uh, not a part of the game. You can't try and get away with anything. The rules are there to protect you, and you, and you recognize that, and uh, you respect that. And that's what I like about it. When you walk off the golf course and you've won a golf tournament, only you know if you behaved properly, played by the rules, and did it right. Nobody else knows. So if, if you haven't done it right, it's a very shallow victory. The sights and sounds of a golf course are surroundings every player has experienced. The serenity of well-manicured fairways inspires all golfers to play the game with the only limitations being your ability and the conditions you're facing. There is no referee, no judge of your talent other than yourself and the course. How different golf would be if someone else officiated every time you went to play. Off sides. Mr. Jacobson, get that ball back behind the markers. Yes, sir. Is this a microphone? I don't even know, man. It's a hard game. He's got a mute. Oh, he's got him separate. Okay, unmute. Sit, ball. Okay, he's Stay got him separate. Is that safe? I safe. figured it out. I thought he just had one button, because when I streamed, I just had one button that I just pressed to mute. Obviously, unmute. the scenes we just saw with the referee this and the umpire don't really happen. This guy here has a We're separate... We're all responsible for our own actions on the golf course, and consequently, separate. our own successes and our own failures. This is what makes golf so special. In fact, it's All the right. only major sport where players I'm actually monitor themselves. Tired. We oh, must always be honest with ourselves when we play, no matter how tempting it is to look the other way. I probably shouldn't. Let's Come see on, if I can fix his tape, because it's also man. killing. Give a little kick out of there. It's OK. Go ahead. Don't be foolish, Peter. You can't do that. <laughs> you must play every ball as it lies. Now, go ahead and give it your best try. OK, I tried turning it down. Is it too far? Stand <laughs> back. Pete, I didn't get your score today, so what did you make? I, uh, nobody saw that ball move when you moved that twig. Come on, you made a No, oh, no. Peter, you know that's a one-stroke penalty. That's the rule. Now tell him, you Open made a five. Open up the second I OBS. I made bogey. It's important to respect the game and your fellow players by being honest with yourself. Don't look to others to guide you. Understanding and obeying okay, the rules that? should come from within you. And if you don't believe me, learn from some of the Is greatest players the game has ever known. <laughs> I'm not doing a great job. In 1925, of the stream, Bobby apologize. Jones was a favorite to win the United States <laughs> Open Championship. In the opening I round on the 11th hole, around, as he addressed um, his ball in the rough, upstairs, it appeared to move. Doing nothing with my life. I remember playing with him that round. Although and actually we came back home the ball hearing a, away a loud into the screeching uh, air, and, uh, mess, air noise he, and I thought he like one of like, our like, backup bricks or something And then he walked away from it and he went up to it again and he played a beautiful shot, um, put right it about left, five or six feet from the hole got, what I have and hold the putt to as the, um, and the, uh, the score brown says screen three, of Mr. Death. Jones. <laughs> He says, no, that's a four. Um, I don't he know if you've ever had a brown a screen of death it. before, it be a stroke but it's when your screen turns Bobby all brown. Jones but anyway, um, one stroke. it was loudly screaming because there Best wasn't a hard drive Italy installed. 1982 United States Women's Open Championship during the final round. Seemed a little weird. As she stood over her putt on the eighth hole, she noticed something was wrong. Her putter <laughs> was too close to the ball, and it had moved slightly when she addressed it. Um, I restarted penalty. the computer. She made a five instead um, of a four. 
and it's working again. But the worst part is this is my second work computer because my first one, was playing in the final um, round of the 1996 all of the audio drivers uninstalled go, themselves, a.k.a. failed. After chipping uh, the 17th green, he went to mark his ball. <laughs> And caused it to move so slightly. I was going through meetings Tom with a microphone that worked, but no audio. So I just had like automated closed captioning. Even with the championship at stake, he was prepared to incur a penalty. <laughs> but the official correctly explained anyway, the rule, uh, I'm out cursed. There was no infraction. As far as me streaming again, the thing is that I've been doing such a good job Tom being a uh, stream he had passenger a rules princess. To give him guidance. But when most people play, they don't have that luxury. <laughs> you can do it alone. But when you have any questions or doubts as how to make the right decision, refer to the rules of golf. Those by rules were mandated rules golf, by the government. You'll enjoy the game um, more and help yourself maintain the standards of honesty and integrity established hundreds of years ago. By the Use government. The book provided by the USGA to help you. If you can't refer to the rules of golf, they really are or making this seem extremely rule, official. Then here's a helpful hint: always play the course as you find it, play the ball as it lies, and when that's not possible, just do what's fair. Legally no required. one will monitor the rules of golf for you the way you will. Everyone who plays the game I should, should the know of the sport. more about golf than time, I do. Enjoy um, the game by holding themselves I to the grew up on a golf course in the true spirit of the um, game. In that the my my yard used to be a golf course and then my parents bought it. <laughs> So when uh, when my brother was uh, was uh, was a baby, um, they still had the sand traps. So they had all these photos of my brother uh, sitting in little, sitting in sand traps. So the thing is, my parents have like uh, so we we have half the golf course, um, but it was only like a nine hole golf course. So it's like half. But anyway, um, it was a small one. But um, they took they got rid of the sand traps. But my parents have like about four and a half acres, and we mowed most of it. And so how my parents would tell us which area to mow um, is we would always refer to it as hole one, hole two, hole three. <laughs> and so like my, you know, my friends would be over and my parents are like, Haley, uh, by, you know, and you need to go mow holes one through three. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, oh, you know, the golf course. You know, Ernie and I play golf all over the world. But no matter where we are, we Point always get the worst part is, though, I've never played golf. Get ourselves ready to play. <laughs> Aside from helping you My play parents better, had parties. Um, we had golf clubs. We even golf, still had, like, the, the original flyers from when, the, from when it was a course. Hey, Ernie, um, have a look at this fellow we're going to play with Look today. at this fellow. Man, he's got to be serious. And uh, I didn't play it. Right, no, I only did mini golf. But, like, I used to play mini golf a lot with my grandpa. My grandpa liked golf a lot. Um, you guys won a couple major championships, huh? So much that we had his funeral uh, at a... Um, Bill, you look like you'd be We had his funeral at a miniature golf course. <laughs> well, I played a little basketball when I was young, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's too bad. But, you know, obviously we had the whole, like, casket viewing thing, you know, all that stuff. Like, you know, at a, at a funeral home where you should have that. Uh, but we went over to the mini golf course and, like... Hey, Ern, how about <laughs> all of the staff was there, right? And so the thing is, like, we, we had, like, fully catered. But the thing that, like, you know, the thing that happens, like, at funerals is, like, you know, my grandpa was my grandpa was older, you know, so it wasn't unexpected. You know, I was still sad. We were still very sad, obviously. It was more, a little bit more like a celebration of life kind of thing. But anyway, you know, like, it, we weren't all that hungry, you know, grief. I mean, it depends on the person, but for us, I guess, grief wasn't making us super hungry. On the previous so we had it like fully catered with like sandwiches first. and all this stuff well, and like just yet. we were all just kind of nibbling on them right and so we went and we Obviously sort of told all the right staff now, there which was dangerous. a lot of teenagers like hey we have so much extra food come on in when you're taking your breaks today just <laughs> just come on into our nice little funeral <laughs> we don't care come eat food like <laughs> you know like we're chill like that <laughs> We've all had minimum wage jobs, you know, we're like, we, it's not going to bug us. It's fine. But so anyway, so these teenagers were coming in, like, totally nice thrilled because, you know, Thanks, they were at Bill. the age you can just eat, like, infinity the sandwiches. The and they were you. chatting. And we were like, hey, come sit down at our we're funeral that we're having. And, and, and a couple of the guys, they were like, off or taking practice swings. Is the casket here? And we're like, what? And they're like, we thought you were bringing the body here. And we're like, no. No, we put that in the ground. <laughs> 
or else you're liable to be hit by the driver's back. <laughs> but you know, I loved Stay how down, they were having so much fun at my grandpa's funeral. <laughs> And do your best to be a silent. <laughs> and I legitimately mean possible. that. You know, it wasn't a it wasn't a funeral. It wasn't their family member's funeral. They were being respectful, <laughs> like. <laughs> and we were like, come have a bunch of sandwiches. <laughs> wow, how about that one, Nick? I think I got you beat, man. But yeah, yeah, it was yeah, a pretty yeah, big miniature golf before. place in Madison. Hey, I'm drawing a blank on right. what it was called, but um, those two shots. I think I hit they had like three. a top okay. golf esque area to Most it. Golf but, holes have three or four uh, different teams. Also, grounds. like you know, miniature. So anyway, we just have all these pictures of us in funeral clothes playing mini golf which is just a really bizarre thing and golf handicaps here <laughs> let's take a look at our group for example oh no that means alex has to go well, to a Bill different one to i assume from the middle team. also sorry Bernie i'm readjusting this because my piercings have been real picky from the championship team. actually they were doing great However, in japan my piercings were doing we're finally healing now, super well in japan and it's because they have like the cool japanese style bathrooms with like the green at least in america we don't really usually have like the shower heads that you can take off a golfer with Ernie's skill would have an unfair advantage if he was playing the middle tee, and would probably find it a lot less challenging. So choose your team <laughs> ground carefully, and remember, make a decision based on your own ability, and you'll have a more. Yeah, you'd think I would experience. know more about golf than I do, and the answer is I know nothing. My brother knew about it. My brother was a uh, was a caddy in town. Oh, right, Bill. Beauty, Bill. Good shot, man. But it just wasn't no, my jam. I don't know. Take. I had other things hey, to do. Hey, it's in the fairway. So as we've seen, there's a lot more that goes on around the teeing ground than just driving the golf ball as hard and as far as you can. That's for sure, Ernie. I don't believe your it. Your actions on the teeing ground, especially the first tee, will set the tone for the rest of your round. So remember the following. Always get to the course early and be prepared to play. Always be aware of your safety and the safety of others. Stay silent and still while others in your group are teeing off. These are also and required by the U.S. government. Best matches your ability. Let's go. Wait! 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 Hit him! Sorry about this, Bill. Hit him! Nice fame, you know. Yeah, it must be tough for you guys. Excuse me, but you're Bill Russell, aren't you? Yes, and what's your name? Jonathan. I'm sorry to bother hey, you. Yeah, I think Stephen had one that shirt in you? one of his of bags. You you're Bill Russell? <laughs> the Bill Russell? Of course. Didn't you recognize him? Bill Russell. He only won like 11 NBA championships with the Boston Celtics. <laughs> More than any other player ever. Hey, Ern, what about it? How about a picture with a big fella here? Yeah? yeah, I think so, Nick. I think he's more important than you, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Take a picture with the kid. What on earth? That's not what people want to see. Is there anything worse than going up to a hole and, and hitting a shot, maybe a little too short, it's in a bunker, and you're looking at a footprint your ball's in? You know, I mean, you war crimes? They just walk down the fairway. Those and are worse. Things, <laughs> I think it's the courtesy to pick it up, first of all. You always want to leave the course <laughs> a little better than you found it, and sometimes that's difficult. Um, I like to leave them a little worse. It's, 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 it's always been something that's really important. But if I make a divot, I'm going to replace it. If I make a ball mark, I'm going to fix Everybody it. Everybody has you got to replace when the I divots. I know that. When I was finished, I swept the court and picked up the balls. So it's the same. Look at all that pine straw. Nestled amidst the vast expanses of our great nation, are wondrous man-made havens of peace, tranquility, and, and wasting peace. water. It is here that beautiful fairways, groomed bunkers, and smooth greens combine to form the natural The only respectful golf course was my parents' yard. <laughs> the recreational Because we didn't water it. In fact, However, we lit it on fire. As breathtakingly beautiful as Which, the out of context, it is in Sounds fact wild. Beauty, one that is threatened each and every day by one of the golf course's most potent natural enemies. I don't know if I should be giving context that we just the lit. ignorant golfer. Oh, look at that lady. Join you, us now in discovering divots, more about these fair. predators of the fairway as we explore the mysteries of course condition. The first rays of sunlight signal a new day on the golf course. 
As the first tea time approaches, the golf course maintenance crew grows noticeably agitated. There are golfers nearby, and they bring with them the unmistakable scent of danger. There he is, danger. <laughs> At first light, the caravan sets out in search of the this ignorant funny. golfer, this is funny golf. led by their guide, golf course superintendent Mark Gorga. Before long, they encounter I want a small them just to family pull out a of rifle novice golfers shoot a playing golfer. on the fairway. <laughs> Due to their lack of experience, newcomers to the game are likely candidates to tear up a course as they play. The members of the caravan watch intently for any signs of ignorance. No we luck. put them down. Here, Dad takes part in one of the most time-honored rituals of the golf course, replacing a divot, green side up, and then a firm press to keep it in place. And it's clear that Junior's learned Here's from Dad's thing. example. He knows that you never take a divot I mean, I with a practice swing, no matter it? where you are on the golf course. I don't actually know what course. to do here. And mom knows full well that you have to pick up your feet when you walk on a golf course. The damage one can cause by dragging their feet on the playing surface can be significant. Oh dang, I didn't Alas, even know that. there would be no ignorant golfers in this group. They'd get to live another Indigenous day. To the golf course, divots are a natural phenomenon created when a golf club makes contact with the ground, causing a chunk of turf to break free. And while the divot itself is relatively harmless, the divot hole that it creates is This is a good point, story. Alex. I think we should restart it and record this section. There was the a real good meme at the beginning. The area will heal in a matter of days. If left unrepaired, I don't it becomes know how. a definite threat to the condition of a golf course. As the sun reaches its afternoon zenith, the golf course is alive with activity. The caravan sets out for the other side of the course, most commonly referred to as the back nine. All right. All right. Sorry, guys. I'm going back, but I think everybody's enjoyed this one. <laughs> Look, I wasn't intending on uh, running a stream today. Um. All right. All right. All right. Because we were talking about the dangers on the course. There he is. Okay. This was. This is the funny time. Okay, but like how far back do we go? As we explore the mysteries of course condition. I'm just gonna start it here. He has two OBSs up. I don't know what this is about. I just had to bandage an OBS on the golf and like course. a painting. As the first tea time approaches, the golf course maintenance oh, man. If we, we want to go back further, okay, let's go all the way back. Let's go all the way back to the start, because the start of it's funny. I mean, not to the start of the video, but this part does go, okay. Valid. Golf backwards. Goodbye. Okay, so here here was where this all began, right? Yeah. Take a ball mark, I'm going to fix it on the green. When I played on clay courts as a kid and I was finished, I swept the court and picked up the balls. It's the same. All right, I'm just going to start it here. I have the TV on upstairs, so hopefully Alex can hear it. Oh my god, Nestled the dog. amidst the vast expanses of our great nation, Laika is are so wondrous man-made havens of peace, tranquility, and beauty. She is peace, It is here that beautiful beauty beauty fairways, right groomed bunkers, and smooth greens well, we went to go pick combine her up, to um, form the natural habitat I don't think for she, one of uh, nature's most I don't think she like, really creatures. believed that it was us. <laughs> the recreational golfer. She seemed very shocked. However, as breathtakingly beautiful as the golf course might be, it is in fact a fragile beauty, one that is threatened each and every day by one of the golf course's most potent natural enemies. The ignorant golfer. Join us now in discovering more about these predators of the fairway as we explore the mysteries of course condition. Thanks. Um, 
They didn't have the, the canned Arnold Palmer's. Signal a new day on the golf course. Yeah, this was it was 8:26 for these two drinks and a Johnny Bootlegger. agitated. There are golfers it, nearby. It's bum liquor. It's really bad. I don't know if you, I've never had the strawberry flavor. Danger. Okay, here um here's the headset back. Remember to hit stop. At first light, the caravan sets out in search of the ignorant golfer. Sorry, this whole video is actually very good, but I do think this section should be um before long, I know it's a good a section. Of Everybody, please golfers, back me up that this section in particular is very good and should be put up on YouTube and by itself. Newcomers to the game are likely candidates to tear up a course as they play. Like the whole the video is actually very good, but this part in particular, extremely funny. No luck. Here, Dad takes part in one of the most time-honored rituals of the golf course replacing a divot. I mean, like, it is time on it. Like, again, I never even played golf, and I still knew to do this. Like, I couldn't tell you when someone taught me to, example, you know, pat it down with your foot, you but, like, I knew this already, probably swing, because no I was born on the, on the course. course. I was born next to a divot that had been properly replaced. And Mom knows full well that you have to pick up your feet when you walk on a golf course. The damage one can cause by dragging their feet on the playing surface. I was born from a divot that have been properly Alas, replaced. Oh, no, there would I be no ignorant mouth. golfers in this group. Thank you. Indigenous to the golf course, divots are a natural phenomenon created when a golf club okay, makes contact with were. the ground, causing a chunk of turf to break free. And while the divot oh, yeah, itself wait, is relatively it harmless, the divot hole that it creates is quite another story. Now, here's Put it in. I don't if think I want to swig bum liquor. The damaged alive. surface I'm, area will more. heal in a matter of days. If left unrepaired, Dude, it becomes a definite threat to the condition of the golf course. I like how it looks like someone bled in my honor, Arnold course. Palmer. <laughs> As the sun reaches its afternoon zenith, the golf course is alive with activity. The caravan sets out for the other side of the course, most commonly referred to good. as Give me the a little back more. nine. I'm jet lagged. They run it's into some some time for me. I don't know what time is it in Japan off on the right par now. Three 11th hole. The members uh, of the what caravan time is it remain Japan still right in now. the brush, knowing full well that golfers are an easily distracted animal. Oh, Siri didn't like that. A good oh, it's sign. two at two this in the morning. So yeah, rather large definitely bum like time. <laughs> this could be the break they've been waiting for. Ah, uh, but again, disappointment. This golfer is a smart one. He's what? using some soil and Bum. seed mixture to fill in his divot. This mixture may be found in a container at each teeing ground or on a golf cart. It can be used if you can't find or can't piece together your original divot. The caravan's search for the ignorant golfer would continue. It's pretty good. As the late afternoon sun bears down upon the remaining inhabitants of the golf course, the members of the caravan know that as the daylight diminishes, so too do their chances of finding the ignorant golfer. But then, at this bunker on 18... When they find the ignorant golfer, they are going to shoot them, right? Fresh tracks, starting at the highest end of the bunker and heading downward, the kind that only an ignorant golfer would leave behind. Any other breed would know that you always enter and exit a bunker from its lowest side because of the potential damage that you can do to the bunker wall. You're right, that is a Humvee golf cart. And even more telling. I went to prom in a in, in, in a Hummer limo, a which is the most like 2007 thing I can imagine. Here. And so, as is usually the case, Mark and the course maintenance crew are left to clean up the ignorant golfer's mess. Although they didn't catch their loathsome quarry, the members of the caravan did unearth a few keys to surviving on the golf course. Always replace your divots, no matter where you are on the course. Test. Use the soil and seed mixture when you can't piece together or find your divot. Hi, Break everyone. a bunker completely and consistently after you've hit so it's level. I also have a microphone. And so, as the golf course gently settles into darkness, so it remains still a land of great mystery. But the day's <laughs> events did reveal one undeniable speaking. truth about this utopian stuff. land of leisure. Always well, leave a golf course in better condition than you Is found it for the people playing behind you. VCR, in the ASMR. True spirit of the game. That was great.
All right, yeah, you can't yeah, treat a golf course like a church. All right, I'll stop and, recording uh, like this. Like your section. backyard, and you want to play well, you want to play. On a good I did golf the right thing. Tell him oh I did God, the right John thing. Elway. At other times. Tell him I did the right uh, thing. Not landing in your divot, and uh, and the green state had, matter because if we bought uh, another one of you know, these, to shoot headsets, a good score, you have to play um, on good greens. And to, to have good greens, two-person streams. Players have to take care of which would be good for like the ASL tape in particular. Yeah. I need, like, earbuds because of my stupid piercings. Oh, okay. Our story today well, focuses can, can on a phenomenon something. that has taken the world of golf by storm. But it's yeah, an effort um, to save the world's putting greens. Every day I have on a golf splitter and everything, all across America, so, like, our putting surfaces are being it up, destroyed. We do proper two and while images right now, of I can unrepaired just kind of hang awkwardly behind you. And mishandled like a, flagsticks like a drunk may seem uncle incomprehensible giving a, to a wedding golfers. speech. Rest assured that uh, what you're seeing kind of is very real um, and a very real not concern. Having prepared we can't his seem remarks to stop very this well. problem. We can only hope to contain it. And now there's an effort underway designed and, um, specifically to preserve our greens cheering. and to spare them from disturbingly John Elway. We all remember Do you want to sit down and be funny? Remember when John Elway threw the football? And it's... To spread Which the word on how to protect far. our putting surfaces. I remember and it's receiving John terrific support from the entire golf community. I think um, to save uh, the greens you can be released of your duties. Does this time. mute you to too? Yes. And that's uneducated players. These are the golfers, both young and old, who don't realize that the putting surface is the most sensitive part of the entire golf course. Ben Crenshaw is a PGA Tour professional as well as a golf historian and I golf course unmuted. designer. You're just funnier so we certainly than me. Stand back. Also, I'm not spooked by staying back because I, didn't I have uh, balls of but steel. But if you don't handle yeah. a flagstick um, properly, even if you're just putting it down. No, I mean, you're a, you're a great guest, a guest host. Or even something as basic as getting As I ball sit down and can't figure out you your setup, and I'm just like, look at the dog. That's, a slightly good. That's basically what I do. Is Countless to and then I'm like, oh, you guys want to hear about when my grandpa died? And are doing what they can to educate players on green setting. Yeah, putt putt funeral. Putting services is obviously an important issue for golf course superintendents around the country. I mean, I'm out here every day, and I can see the progress that's being made. I mean, made. I'm, I'm definitely well, just done the after other this day, I overheard But it a sounds like it's a good one to end on. Dad, that it's a good one. It's a good one. Immediately after it's created, it'll oh. heal in two to three days, mm -hmm. compared to ignoring a ball mark, which ball, can take ball up ball three weeks to heal. Fixing. Look at those grass. If you think that Save the Greens campaign is having an impact now, just wait two or three years. By that time, I think the instances yeah, where you see people abusing about putting funny. greens will be it's few and far between. We really like That's how many lives are being affected by this movement. Here, one of the best players in the world, Davis Love III, is explaining to players the importance of fixing your ball mark as soon as you get ball, to the ball, green ball, and reminding mine. them not to ignore any other ball marks ball they may see in the same area. When you come to the green, first place you go is the ball mark, not your ball. Repair Happy your ball early mark birthday. and any others Mine's you see in, in the a area. little bit. It's our responsibility to leave the course better than we found it. But I'm not going to get to have a fun group is learning the basics year. of fixing a ball mark from Julie Angster. This three-time U.S. women's amateur champion plays not on the anybody LPGA else's Tour. Fault here. You take your repair tool or your tee. You start from the outside working in. Mm -hmm. Now bring the edges together with a gentle twisting motion. But do not, I repeat, do not lift the center. Now smooth the surface over with your putter or you can use your foot. Now, am I done? Yes. And how can you tell when you're done? When you have a surface that you would like to putt over. Right. You know you're done when you have a surface that you would like to putt over. You guys have done great today. Give yourself a round of applause. One of the driving forces behind the Save the Greens movement is golfing legend and three-time U.S. Open champion, champion Hale Irwin, who often spends his right entire life preaching the gospel of greens etiquette. Finally, find out if I'm etiquette. allergic to sutures or what. But they keep Hale, asking about like grass and dogs, and then I, there was no place for me to explain like what I was actually allergic to. So I'm like, I don't have any problem with grass or dogs, and I'm sure that some football analogies he learned as a defensive back at the University of Colorado. Hale was showing yet another group of golfers. One of the I had surgery, and then I uh, was covered Marking in ball, allergy, and, and then the allergy kept coming line. back, and then it avoid kept coming the back, and then it kept lines of anyway. the other players. So avoid putting lines. So come around. I might this be allergic, to, allergic to dissolvable sutures, but when I looked it up, line. there's only Very like important. five PGA ever American reported Club cases. Like myself. So I'm hoping that's not it, but I also my incisions are still itchy. So. Even though it may appear that we're touching the lives of a small number of people, 
I think our message will have an impact. And it was supposed to have dissolved by now. Scale. Lots of people are like, mm, as of no, now, the Save the Greens campaign shows absolutely no signs of slowing down. Oh, Whether it's oh. fixing ball marks with a repair tool, Thank handling the flag out. stick without damaging the putting surface, placing golf bags away from the green, or just no. knowing where each player's putting lines are. The are future for sleepy. America's greens looks out. to be brighter than ever. So the next time you're out on the golf course, try. Try to do what you can to help save the greens for your fellow players. And of course, in keeping with the true spirit of the game. Some people just don't know the little things to, do, to make the game tape? a little faster. And uh, if they would learn those I mean, things, it would be tape, much more enjoyable. Well, all you have to do is think ahead. Uh, you must anticipate. And uh, I don't know how much you know that if you I get the shortest ball, it's your shot. So you get there But wearing quickly. one of my shirts, uh, my one, one of my Japan shirts. Them, you prepare your shot. Uh, you want to move along because it's enjoyable. I bought day. a lot you of cool ones, but then time. I bought this one and just so because the back says shots and at skater. Or how they did or Am I showing you it? Ball, you're ready also, to go, it's like really shot, thick. It's nice. When it's your turn to hit, you hit. Life is very simple. I, it's from a thrift store. I spent most of my time in Japan going to thrift stores. <laughs> and I showed off some of my cool looks. Um, 80s anime lesbian vampire look is probably the number one winning look. Um, yeah, he's, he is holding a surfboard on a skateboard, but I saw this shirt and I was like, oh, this one's good. It's also from... It's not from Uniqlo. The, the brand of it is like anti-ballistic. Don't you think I'm a little old for a story? Yeah, that is kind of cheesy. Come on, girls. You're never too old for mom to read you a story. Oh, you're getting to read a golf story. What is she holding? Is that a CD player? Oh, Good. that's a CD the player. The story is a tortoise and the hare play golf. The characters and circumstances you are about They're to see in this video They're hitting so are many genres fictional. in this tape. They are tape? not meant to resemble any real persons, places, or situations. You be the tortoise. No, you be Furthermore, the tortoise. Hey, you be the tortoise. Well, you what's be the going tortoise. on? No, you be the tortoise. No way. Look. If I play the tortoise, I'm afraid that everybody's going to think that I'm actually a slow player. Why don't you play the tortoise? Okay, but the tortoise um, is scary. I was hoping I could do it without looking like a ninja. A what? A ninja? Tortoise. Well, if you want people to take me seriously as the hare, this bunny costume might as well go. <clears throat> as I was saying, the actions of the LPGA stars I in this fairy tale do not at all simulate their tape. actual behavior when they are out on the golf course. Once upon a time, there was a tortoise oh, no, she's and scared. a hare, and they both really enjoyed the game of golf. The problem was, oh, they enjoyed no. it at two Dog different speeds. Oh, is having PTSD. For the hare, who played quickly, oh, maintaining a good shivering. pace of play was easy. <laughs> she, is she just always okay. made sure to be prepared hey, when it was her turn to hit. Anywhere. She figured out where her ball was, how many yards she was from the hole, Go and what club she was going to use well before it was her turn. And if she were using a golf cart, some the hare would bring several clubs girl. to her ball before choosing also, the one she wanted make to her use. Feel better as the she tortoise, runs on the, the other door. hand, didn't use her time as wisely. <laughs> she was never prepared to play when it was her turn. She wandered up to her ball, waited too long to figure out her yardage and choose a club, and often forgot the most basic principle. The person farthest from the hole should always be ready to hit next. Hey, you're away. Are you ready? Who, oh, me? Hey, Mom, isn't it kind of obvious that the hare hates the tortoise because she's so slow? Oh, well, I think hate might be too strong a word. You know, I it's don't more think like so. the hare is frustrated by the tortoise. You know, who wants to play with the slow golfer? On the par fourth, seventh hole, the tortoise sliced one into the forbidden forest. After the hare hit her second shot from the fairway, she looked over to the trees expecting to see the tortoise. The front? It's been several minutes. The hare said to herself. The front pleats on those wrong. shorts is really Anxious giving her a shape. The, the hare headed toward the forbidden forest. Like a ran under the couch. I can't find stuff. my ball. I think oh, it's lost. You've dumb. been looking all this time, and you're just <laughs> now deciding back. that it might be lost? You really should have yeah, done like that a few minutes ago. You realize there are people playing behind us, and we're probably slowing like them was, down. Was treated Gee, I'm like sorry. Royalty. What am I supposed to uh, do? 
Well, what you should have done time. is played a provisional ball from the tee this time when you realize that your first so shot not might have gone into the fourth. She's like scared provisional, that we're going that? to drop her okay, off somewhere let's say again. You hit that last drive and thought it was in the woods or out of bounds. You could have played a provisional or a second ball. Then after looking for your first ball, if you didn't find it within five minutes, you yeah. could continue to play that hole with your there provisional ball. There were so many pairs of penalty. pants with wow, front Wow, I didn't know that. that but I, I can't go back to the tee now. Um, There's already groove waiting there. From the George In household. Fact, shouldn't we let them play through? Yeah, that's a good idea. You know, lost balls and lots of other information are covered in the rules of golf. <gasps> the, the Bible! Published by the USGA. You might want to look it over. Yeah, I guess you're right. It seems like I have a lot to learn. I'll keep it in my bag from now on. Once you become more aware of the rules of golf and the pace of play, you'll be a lot more fun to play with. Yeah, I just had no idea that pace of play was so important. But now that I know, I'll always be prepared to hit when it's my turn. I limit the time I spend looking for lost balls, and I'll be aware of how my pace of play is affecting the players behind me. And so, the tortoise and the hare continued their round. And because the tortoise the front pace pleats of play was did no not give an anyone them, a shape that, that was forward, good, why did we do this? Happily ever after. Like, you can have Stand. front pleats that are good, That's but like, it. you need to, they need to. Lame. Well, it was a fairy tale about golf. They need to make go, to go down, because it should, your body, it should not give you a. Just be home in time for dinner, please. No problem. Now that we know like, about pace of play, it will it be It gives your side like a, right, like a... I think they got the point of the story. Like, and I hope you did like too. Bee, in the true like the spirit of bee. the game. Yeah, why do so many men's pants make it look you like know, they're wearing diapers? You know, I wouldn't trade being a professional caddy on the PGA Tour for anything. But I must admit, sometimes it's Fluff. hard to keep my work and my everyday private life separate. Mm. Ma'am, let me help you with this. Oh, that's all right. I've got no, it. No, no, I'd be happy to do this for you. Kill him. I hope she now, hits him in the head wrong. with I'm a club. I'm to have a job that I love. Excuse me. Which pair do you think goes better? I'd go with the white ones. Okay, I did. I think they say a lot more about fashion than the other ones do. I yeah, did check YouTube I think you're right. Thank you. You're welcome. USGA but I'm starting to worry that the work I'm doing as a caddy just might be influencing the way that I relate to people, anywhere. even when I'm not on the golf course. I would. So, Excuse me. How do you get away from here? Actually, it's only about. But I'm being told that we should. You that make your where second left up there at that the stream, corner. Recording the whole thing and, from and there, just uploading it to YouTube. It's good. Since it's downwind. Okay, we can do that. Great. Thanks. Look, see this, this, I mean? this thing you're missing so now right you now, can see this is why so Whenever funny. I come out to the golf course to actually play around, I do what I can to keep it as different from work as possible. And for me, I'm using one of these one is just about as different as it gets. Do you like to sit down and, and enjoy sure, some of if, this? If you want, yeah. Thank oh. you for, thank as you for guest hosting caddy, while I ran to get us our own former ingredients. Oh, like everybody else, I think walking is the best way to truly enjoy the game. But that doesn't mean I don't enjoy the convenience of a golf cart every now and then. And for some players, like those who are unable to walk or who are physically challenged, carts provide them with their only real access to the game. Let's hear it for Haley. Thank you, Haley. Hey, look at Thank this. Thank you for got being it. our golf we got friend. It. We actually got fluff on tape driving a golf cart. Boy, wait until our fellow caddies see this. Fluff will never hear the end of it. You know, golf carts may be quick and easy, but that doesn't mean you can drive them wherever you want to on the golf course. In fact, the policies regarding where you're allowed to take your cart vary not only from course to course. Is there any left for me, by well. the way? That's why before sure, you Sure, if you want to add a little to mine. Check in with the PGA professional Thank you very much. or the golf shop to find out what cart policies are in effect for that day's play. I mean, no. You can leave the, You can have all the Johnny bootlegger you want. Only cart pass and roughs, which covers the 90 degree rule or scattered anywhere. No matter which rules might it's just, be in effect, it's most like of the time you'll melted wind up Jolly Ranchers and near your ball liquor. and then walking the rest of the way. But before going to your ball, estimate your approximate distance from the hole and select several clubs so that you don't have to go back and While I was gone, Green Day Rock gifted a sub to pack. Wasabi Milkshake. Thank you, Green Day. And Jacebook just gifted a sub to Brandon. Thank you for that. And howdy, Brandon. Whew. That was a close one. I have not. But you know, I've got to admit, Fluff made some pretty good points out there about not being able to drive your cart anywhere you want to on the golf course. Oh, thank you so much. And bring it along so more red. than one club at a time. Too bad that won't it's help like him. Cool Show everybody this tape. <laughs> 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 yeah. Come on, let's beat him to the green. Yeah. 
If you drive or park your golf cart in the wrong place on the course, chances are you'll be doing some damage to the grass or maybe even a bunker. Always follow cart paths, signs, and roped areas that help guide you around the course. So remember, see what cart rules are in effect for the day you're playing and follow all the regulations. You won't be able to drive a cart over every yard of the course, so estimate your yardage and select several clubs before walking to your ball and keep the cart at least 30 yards away from a green or bunker. Also, to help pace a play, try to park your cart around the green in the direction of the next teeing ground. This will save time when your group We're is done. We're learning a lot about parking our carts. Hey, Fluff! Nice golf cart. You guys, what are you doing here? Wait, got one more line I want you to say. Ready? Say, you got me. <laughs> you got me. Is this a whole subsection on golf carts? It was fun, wasn't it? I enjoyed that, just getting out, just having a nice relaxing 18 holes. Yeah, it was all right, but I'll tell you what, you made me a little bit nervous the way you I can't you tell if those are novelty no, no. visors with wigs on them exactly or if that's their hair. Time, I guess but that's their hair. It's a little bit extreme for me. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe when we were going down the hill at the 12th. Mm. I thought you may have been just going a little too fast down that steep slope. Really? No, I'm thinking about it. That sharp turn on the eighth. We were going too fast then, too. For a minute there, I thought we were driving in the Indy 500. But, you know, I, I just got a little nervous because I'm very cautious when I drive the cart, so it's no big deal, mate. Just forget what I said. OK. I mean, that eighth, um, I remember that turn. I didn't think I was going that quick. But I thought it was pretty careful there. Two hands on the wheel, my legs and arms are in the cart at all time. Everything was pretty much under control. In fact, I thought it was pretty close to perfect. You know, staying under control is the key to being safe. Yeah, that, and using plain old common sense. And it's fairly obvious that you don't really want to drive the cart too close to a water hazard. Well, for that matter, why everyone should put their emergency brake on. Golf carts do roll. Good I point. MTV I really didn't mean to insult style. your driving. Well, Al, I think we both agree. The main thing is safety out there on the course, and if, you, if you're safe and being sensible, then you're going to enjoy it even more. Jenna, the golfer. For most players, golf carts can be something of a luxury. Let's face it, there's no easier way to make your way around a golf course. But for those of us who have a tougher time walking and carrying our bags for 18 holes, these carts are more than a convenience. They're a necessity. Without them, we'd never be able to experience the emotions that even one round of golf can provide, the same highs and lows that make you keep coming back for more. It's a cool, modified swing. While those of us who are physically challenged rely on golf carts a lot more than most golfers, that doesn't mean we're exempt from any of the practices that Fluff, Allison, and Lara were discussing earlier. Golf cart etiquette is part of the game the same way that chipping and putting are, and therefore should be practiced by every golfer, physically challenged or otherwise in the true spirit of the game. The spirit of the game. Many accomplished golfers learned about the spirit of the game at an early age. Tagging along with my dad when I was a little kid. He uh, started me in the game when I was 11 years old. He's also the one that you know, taught me about where to stand, when to talk, when not to talk. Tending the flags. Breaking bunkers. Not stepping in everybody's line. It was very important that I did the right things at the right time on the golf course. I would imitate him. And he never swears, he never throw clubs. And I threw a club one time and he came across the fairway and told me, that's it, you're done. And he took my clubs away from me for a month. In teaching my kids golf, the first thing I want to teach them is to respect the game and respect others on the golf course. Teach them that they can have fun and follow the rules at the same time and it would be a great game for them. The game of golf has always played a huge role in my life. In fact, the Walker Cup match, a biannual amateur event, is named after my grandfather, George Herbert Walker. Since my youth, golf has appealed to me because of the values it represents. Principles like manners, courtesy, and respect, which have been at the very heart of the game since its invention almost 600 years ago in Scotland. Invariably, they golfers are expected to understand how important their behavior and manners are 
when they're out on the golf course. You'll find no other sport that places a greater emphasis on the conduct of its participants. <laughs> oh, now watch this drive as a classic. Manners and behavior. The game is played with, uh, 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 with class. The game is played with um, uh, manners. I think this is the last section. Your uh, fellow competitors, uh, your partners, the people that are in your group. It's almost like the golden rule, you know, do unto others as you ha would have done to you. Well, that's the way it is in golf. It's, I think it's the last sport in which that exists. And when you learn that, and then, then that means that you have respect for the game, respect for others. That's and your that role. You deserve to be part of this great game of golf. Betsy Rawls. Just because golf demands a certain level of conduct from it's its worthy players, of the title golf doesn't legend. Mean that golfers don't have the same intensity, desire, and will to win that other athletes do. Anyone who has ever played golf knows that competitive fire burns as brightly in this game Thank you for the fun as it facts, does yeah. in any other. But because golf places such an emphasis on the way players treat one another, you never see any taunting or finger pointing on the golf course. That's just not what this game is all about. Instead, you're likely to see honest displays of emotion that are born from some of the oldest principles of the game, sportsmanship and respect. Throughout history, some of golf's biggest names have provided us with the best examples of how to behave on the golf course. In 1980, even when Jack Nicklaus made this putt and won his record time fourth US Open, he still had the presence of mind to ensure that runner-up Isai Oki was given the opportunity to finish this round without interruption. In all fairness, he had to have the ability to be able to finish that putt out. And as soon as everybody started running on the green, I said, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is not right. I mean, this golf tournament's not over until this gentleman holds his putt. I played with him all four days at the Open. He'd been a perfect gentleman for four days. And uh, uh, he didn't like losing the tournament to me any more than I wanted to lose the golf tournament to him. But uh, when I won the tournament, I felt that it was the right thing to do to make sure that he had every opportunity to do what he had to do. On the final day of the 1997 U.S. Women's Open, Nancy Lopez and Allison Nicholas went head to head for the championship. Lopez, chasing her first Open victory, finished one stroke behind after missing this heartbreaking putt, which would have tied it on the last hole. I appreciated her competition, uh, that she gave me a run for my money. I loved it. And, you know, I wanted to congratulate her because she played some great golf. Um, you know, I think you kind of always have to put the shoe on the other foot. Wouldn't you want to be congratulated if you won? I mean, that's how I feel about that. Two great champions, Jack Nicklaus and Nancy Lopez, showing the world that, whether in victory or defeat, one can always exemplify good conduct and gracious manners. Today, golf's appeal spreads well beyond the ranks of touring professionals. Oh, it's young Matt Lauer. Of amateurs all over the world, just like me, who've not only taken up the sport, but are hooked on it. However, anyone who enjoys playing the game must also respect it, regardless of where they're playing. Yeah, that's an open. In 2002, the U.S. Open comes to the renovated Black Course at Bethpage State Park in New York. This golf course is now one of the most respected public facilities in the world, not only for the pros, but also for the countless thousands who tee it up every day, it started out tasting mostly just like iced tea, and now I've gotten down to, to, the, there. to the... There's always been lines here at Bethpage. To the bum liquor they lair. Here and they've been coming here for years and years. The people the change, but they're here, and they all enjoy the game of golf, or they wouldn't be here. Got here at 3 o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. First tee off time is 7 o'clock, and this is what you have to do. You have to be there at 3 o'clock. The second car, the third car, and the fourth car came probably about 20 minutes later than that. The earliest time that I know of someone arriving to play golf here at Bethpage was noon the day before for a 7 o'clock tea time the next day on the black horse. Those people that would put themselves through that, and it is sort of an ordeal, really enjoy and love the game. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. Like Bethpage, Eastlake Golf Club in Atlanta has undergone a resurrection as well. Once the golfing home of Bobby Jones, the man who epitomized sportsmanship in golf, Eastlake is now the centerpiece in a program which has helped restore a neighborhood, while at the same time assisting young people in the life lessons that golf has to offer. Every child can succeed. 
When children really want to do something constructive, just give them that opportunity. I love golf, and it's terrific. We've taken a lot of children who were pretty much not reaching their full potential, making D's and F's, who were not setting goals. We're not literally trying to just focus on children becoming competent golfers. We're teaching them a lot of ethics and morals and values and all of that we're doing using a carrot of golf. Yes. According to the Johnny Bootlegger website, the, the strawberry course, version it's literally is between you called Foxhole Fruit Punch. Anyone else. Well, that's kind of how life is. You're responsible for what happens in your life. These children now know when they see a piece of paper, they know to pick it up. They know now when they come out to the golf course, every divot you make, you fix. Right, let's go! Let's go! In golf, your behavior matters as much, if not more, than your final score. It's been that way since the game's creation and will continue to be that way well into the next millennium. As more and more people around the world begin to play, they too will learn what we who play golf already know, the importance mm. of showing respect for the sport Copyright in the true spirit of the game. The spirit of the game. Yeah, I wasn't here for most of this one, but um, Buddy, the spirit of the game. But it sounds like this was a good one, and I enjoyed I enjoyed the parts that I saw. It seems like they had a lot of they had a lot of fun with it, and also the fundamentals of what they were talking about was like respectable and well presented. I hope this program gave you an insight into some of the most important aspects of golf that are rarely mentioned. Hey, we cleared these off the shelf. I'm happy Everyone about that. Everyone must consistently reinforce a basic appreciation Sunny for swing. the game. And always remember, it's a privilege to play. It doesn't matter whether you hit shots like the pros or like a beginner. We all have a common link to the sport of golf, the spirit of the game. For more information or to become a member of the USGA, please call one. This is so inspiring and American too. I love it. USGA. What a perfect return. I got to drink Johnny Bootlegger and learn the morals and values of the U.S. Golf Association. Spirit of the game is playing great golf, enjoying the camaraderie of your foursome, and being respectful of everyone. It's just the love of the game, and I enjoy uh, going out there against all the odds, you know, saying to myself, hey, it's me and this little white ball, you know, what you gonna do today? Maybe I even love striking a golf ball now, straight down the middle like I pictured, you know, hitting the shot you pictured when you walk up to it. Better than I like hitting a home run when I played baseball. I've always felt like um, golf is sort of like life, um, in that right when you think things are this going music great, is so you inspiring. kind of hit a bump in the road. It takes you from one uh, 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 from a great high to a great low, but if you stick it makes with me it, want to play Final Fantasy Tactics. That's going to be very, something. very satisfying. But it also just makes me very feel and, full uh, of American uh, the, it's spirit. A great game of uh, integrity and golf and, spirit. Uh, uh, you have to be very disciplined uh, to be successful. You have to work at it. You have to really, really uh, concentrate. And you've got to have respect, not only for the game, but for the people you play with. Golf's just a great sport to get to know people, too. You know, um, you're out on a golf course for four or five hours, and you know there's plenty of time there where you get to talk to people and uh, learn about them as well. Everybody can play on the same field with handicaps and the handicap system that they have. Uh, you know, guys and women can play together, and uh, I just think it's a, it's a great game, and it's a challenging game that, uh, you know, it, it's uh, something that uh, I'll play for the rest of my life. The more you get involved in it and the more you learn to love it, then naturally the more you're going to respect it. 
I always try to look good. I always try to look like a golfer. I always have coins. I always have tees. I always have a divot fixer. Uh, I always have a towel so my clubs are always clean. And I think it, it puts you in the spirit of the game. It's an unbelievable game for life. And you can play it for life. And so when somebody get, goes to take up the game of golf and play it, they're in for an unbelievable experience. Yeah, that was great. <clears throat> Haley's dad had a driver with uh, that he to like improve your form. I guess it's a common thing to do to have a, a club so that when you're holding it, um, you it, it it extend you put like a dowel into the handle that extends the length of the club so that when you um, you know when you putt and when you swing you you. It like braces against you, and you can feel physically where it is to make sure that you're holding it at the right angle. So Haley's dad had one of these that he made, but instead of like a wooden dowel, he used a fiberglass rod that was unfinished, like not coated with anything. And Haley's dad is just the kind of person who's like, oh yeah, it's a fiberglass rod. I'm just not going to touch it with my hands because I know not to touch a fiberglass rod with my hands and I know that I made this out of fiberglass. Um, and I didn't know this and he didn't think to tell me. <laughs> so I had like handled this fiberglass rod on the golf club with my, with my hands like a bunch, like just all over the place in, in my arm. And then afterwards I was like, why do my hands feel like there are thousands of microscopic splinters in them and he was like oh yeah shit so that was my first and only real experience learning about fiberglass splinters and how horrible they are <laughs> um because yeah they just um they just stay in there like you can't do anything about them they, your skin just has to like die and fall off normally and, and to get rid of them you just like have this burning pain in microscopic places all over your hands for like weeks. But I think it improved my golf swing. I had to guess it did. Okay, well that was the spirit of the game, the etiquette program for the United States Golf Association. Uh, let's go ahead and, oh, that's not working. Come on, come back, clear tape. Uh, and I've learned that there are, what, 12 flavors of Johnny Bootlegger? There's Foxhole Fruit Punch, Moonshine Mango, Ice Lemonade, Alcatraz Sour Apple, Juice Joint Watermelon, Sing Sing Sour Grape. These are named after like prisons for the non-Americans. Shady Shades Strawberry. Wait, how is that different from Foxhole Fruit Punch? They use the same image. Syndicate City Sour Peach, Prison Break Black Cherry, Scarface Sour Raspberry, and Huckleberry. Anyway, thank you for joining us for this wonderful broadcast of Golden VCR. I'm so glad to be back. I'm glad uh, to be back home. I'm glad to see the dog again. I'm glad to be back in a country where I speak the language and know the customs and don't have to live in fear of someone running up to me and saying something to be like, you're not supposed to be sitting there and I won't understand it and it'll be very awkward. And I'm happy to be back streaming tapes. Happy that I can come back and do a stream that I was awake for. 
and that you are all here for. Thank you for being here. We learned from Bandsaw Brad. We learned about cats. We did a kid songs. We got three <laughs> televangelist tapes off of the shelf. And thanks to Haley, we got more. We, we, we discovered a new classic. What is that that you're signing? Are you interpreting for me? No, you're continually doing this, which is what? Oh, <laughs> oh! I'm in the wrong seat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean that's understandable. <laughs> Listen, it's it's exactly the same because in any in any lang in any exchange where you're speaking different languages and you don't understand each other, it eventually devolves into very primitive signing. <laughs> So if if you if you only if if I only speak English and you can't hear me and you say you only use ASL, eventually you're just going to sign in more and more <laughs> dumb ways until I get it. So yeah, it's the same thing. The same thing. Um, thank you, Haley, for uh, co-hosting while I went and got <laughs> Arnold Palmer. Um, I will try and get this recorded and so I can get it up on YouTube at some point. Just just the golf tape and the vod will be up as usual. Um. Yeah, that's it. I have nothing else really. It's gonna get dark soon. To s to mention, there are a bunch of tapes. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. Probably scan them and put them on the website. But um, right now I'm gonna like chill out. I guess maybe do some laundry. <laughs> uh, readjust to American life. So I will see you all on Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern for the next stream of Golden VCR. Thank you very much. Hope you have a lovely weekend. And I'll see you again soon. Stand back. Ah, every time, Jacebook, every time. <laughs>